Morning, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, I'd like to call this meeting of the Strategic Priorities Committee to order July 18th, 2023, 9 a.m. And we are broadcasting on the Town of St. Mary's YouTube channel. I'll begin this morning by asking for declarations of pecuniary interest, starting with Councillor Craigmile. None. Councillor Edney? None. Councillor Luna? None. Councillor Lucas? None. Sir Pridham? None. Councillor Allward? None. And I? And I have none. Um, the Council for the Town of St. Mary's acknowledges with gratitude and respect that we are gathering on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee, people of the Longhouse, giving thanks for all creation. The agenda was circulated for this morning. Are there any errors or omissions or additions for the agenda this morning? Seeing nothing, I'll seek a motion that the July 18th, 2023 Strategic Priorities Committee agenda be accepted as presented. Someone willing to move that motion? Moved by Councillor Craig Miles or seconded? Councillor Pridham, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? The motion is carried. Okay, so we have three items uh, this morning for uh, strategic priorities review. Um, council has had a, a number of discussions with regards to the proposed um, initiatives at the flats. We have raised a number of concerns. Um, and there has been staff has been tasked with uh, going back and, and, and getting more information and trying to chart a path forward. Um, there has been significant um, concern in the community about the future of, of the uh, park area as it is iconic as one person has described to me. So maybe ask Mr. Kitmer if he would outline sort of where we've been and where we're going in terms of the process. There's a lot of information to get through today. So I'd please ask council to be cognizant of that that we stay on topic. Mr. Kitmer, please. Yeah, so thank you, Worship. So yes, as, as the mayor's noted council, um, this is a project that has been in our strategic plan since 2017. Um, it is uh, one of the projects of the greatest public interest that we've seen in a number of years. Um, and to the mayor's point, there's a lot of information in your agenda. And uh, as you're aware, and these two gentlemen will talk to you about, we have some short-term considerations that we need uh, to make some decisions and, and get direction on because we have uh, grant funding to, that we wanna maximize before March of next year. And then there's long-term vision that we want to develop for the park as well. So we've structured your agenda today to do our best um, to have an orderly conversation of council. So I'll just kind of chart out what staff's vision is for how the meeting will go and what our expectations are for each report and why we listed them the way we did. Um, so the first report will be delivered by Mr. Brower and he'll walk you through some of the washroom upgrades and options that he has put in place. Um, through that report, we're expecting council will have a number of questions and comments, but we're not expecting you to make a decision on the washroom during that report because it's our feeling that you can't make a decision on the washroom without the context of the other short-term priorities that you ask staff to look at. Um, so the second report is where we are seeking direction from council today. And we really do need direction from council today on the short-term priorities that you wanna see funded in the, in the park. Um, so that relates back to the, those pieces of direction that you gave us about a month ago to say report and research back on these items. Again, all which were consistent with the flavor of the public input. Um, they relate to, as you'll see in the report, um, accessible playground upgrades, the washroom upgrades, um, things that will make the uh, farmer's market function better, the dock, and it moves on, right? So again, short-term things, short-term improvements that we can make to the part within a year that won't then affect the overall larger picture. The third report is where we really want to confine council's conversation to the larger picture. And we're trying to adopt um, a similar approach to what we took uh, during the Cadzo Park project. And there's, I don't think, I think the afternoon of the mayor and Councillor Craig Mile, the last two here for that. So in that project, it was the exact same as this, where we had went out first public survey, got lots of great feedback from the public about how they would like to see the park be re-envisioned. And council gave us direction and shortlisted a number of amenities that they would like to see, could, could conceivably see be in the park in the future. And then that was given back to the landscape architect. So that's really the third report that Andre will walk you through. He'll walk you through the second and third report. Um, and that's where we chart out that long-term vision. Again, understanding that we're still only gonna develop concepts after that. So if you give us a direction we expect you to give us today, we'll give that back to the landscape architect. We'll develop several more concepts that will go to the public later in the fall in this year. And then we'll have our final decision made you know, later this year or early next year. So it's. It's going to, this is strategic priority, so it is supposed to be informal, but it's, it's a difficult road to navigate when you have this much. So we've done our best to try and just to set it up so you can kind of knock down your dominoes one in a row and get to the finish line today. Um, and as I said, we, the long-term vision, we don't necessarily have to have any sort of final direction today, 
but you'll hear from Andre again say that in the short term priorities, we really do need that short term direction so that we can achieve those granting deadlines. So with that, I'll turn it over to, to your worship or I'll turn it over to the staff to start their presentation. Okay, are there any questions from Council before we begin? Okay, Mr. Brower, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so the Lawn Bowling Building, uh, it's, kind of, it's located in the flats. Um, basically, uh, when we refer to items, we, we go by property address, not always by the nicknames or by the names that they've incurred over time. So we often refer to it as 80, 80 Water Street North. Um, there are public washrooms located within the building, as well as a, a lounge, kitchen, and washroom area. Um, the washroom area within the Lawn Bowling Club is used exclusively for the Lawn Bowling Club. The building was constructed in 1977, um, and it's roughly 885 square feet with a ceiling height of seven foot eight. Um, it features an eight inch block wall um, and back backfilled frosted wall, concrete floors, wooden truss system, uh, truss roof later replaced with steel in 1999. The men's public washroom is roughly 105 square feet at the uh, west side of the building. And then there is a with, with one water closet and two urinals. So we call that three fixture units. And then on the female side, it is 107 square feet with a two fixture units. So two, um, two water closets within that space. Um, it comprises of a stainless steel sink in each, in each uh, unit. There are steel partitions installed to ensure privacy between um, the water closet and the, and the rest of the area. Uh, there is a hot water tank. It is located within the, within the women's washroom and it uh, takes up floor space or floor space within that area. And it's basically for the whole building within, within that, uh, that hot water tank services the whole building. Uh, the lawn bowling washroom encompasses 21.5 square feet. Um, as I indicated before, it is uh, solely for the lawn bowling club and the lawn bowling club have identified that as a women's only washroom. Um, and that's something that they, um, that they do themselves. Is the, it, they they um, identified that primary use as themselves. We would see it as a unisex, but they identified it as a women's only. Um, the rest of the members would use the uh, pub, the public facing washrooms. Uh, so the lounge area comprises of a kitchenette and a larger lounge space, both covered with wood paneling. Uh, the kitchenette is covers roughly 150 square feet, uh, laminate flooring, um, and a corner closet. The amenities include a stove, a fridge, and a microwave on the north side of the kitchenette. Uh, there's a 12 foot counter with a double sink. Um, and that's, that's used for when they have potlucks to accommodate some of their, uh, some of their functions. Uh, they rarely do any cooking uh, within the space because most of it is brought in on crock pots or uh, some sort of warming trays, and then they um, serve from the island. Uh, there, sorry, um, there is a second wooden door, so there is one uh, one access to the lawn bowling to the lawn bowling side, but there is a second wooden door that leads to the bowling green, it's no longer in use. Um, because basically there's an absence of, of steps to the outside, um, but it was something that we could be used or something we could brought on that we could reuse if, or repurposed if we need to. Um, there is one window or a, a few windows in the lounge area consider a single pane uh, windows to the entrance uh, and a single pane quad wooden window overlooking the lawn bowling green. A uh, few for your furniture uh, within the lounge consists of a harvest table, wooden tables, card tables, stackable chairs. They all belong to the lawn bowling club. Uh, currently, there's no dedicated stores for facilities department to keep cleaning products there. So whenever we go to the washroom, we have to bring we have to bring cleaning products within our vehicle, um, and then we have to uh, use them and take them back with us. So all, not only cleaning uh, products, but also paper products as well. Um, the plumbing in the building consists of copper piping throughout with a water meter located at the front entry point. Uh, the water line in is a two, two inch black pipe supplied by Emily Street through an easement through 164 Emily Street. Um, there's been a lot of discussion. We took a look at a lot of these um, agreements. We do have them all on, we, they are registered on title and we do have copies of them. Um, so basically this, the sanitary and the water supply, they, they come through the same easement. Um, 
up through Emily Street through that private property. Uh, we're, un we're unable to uh, camera the condition of the sanitary line because we couldn't get a camera to, uh, to uh, we couldn't find a camera to be able to, what we call camera the pipe. So we're unsure that the state of what it is, um, but we had the pipe looked at, or we had the tank looked at 900 gallon tank. Um, the, the tank is in good, the tank is in good shape. Um, it, it supplies today. There is one pump within the tank. We would probably double that up um, to create redundancy. There was an issue last year, or maybe two years ago now, where, where the one motor went. Uh, we would probably double that up at that time. Um, but the tank is in good shape. The building's in good shape. And basically, it, it's overall, it, it's got good bones because of um, everything there. So it's, it's kind of, it's not good, or it's not a wide use of spending money to, to demolish the building and relocate it because of a number of factors. A, the building's in good shape, the tank's in good shape. We're unsure about the water line, but we can water, we can run the water line again if we have the easement because we do have the easement there. Um, if something was to happen on the easement, we do have the access up through Emily Street where the sidewalk is that we could run a water line, a sanitary line up through there. Um, to get gravity um, out to that location, would, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but if we were to run something out to a water street, it would be a lot more costly because of the excavation and replacement of, um, I'm going to say, because uh, of the road access and um, things along and least or through the access into the park. And so that's why we, we talked about the option not being not being a great option to replace the building. When I first when we first started talking about it, I say, do we relocate the building in a better location that's better situ situated for the park that we can better accommodate parking again? The, the bone, the building has good bones. The plumbing is in fairly good condition from what we can see. Um, and there's no reason to kind of, to, to change anything. Um, so we, we took a look at uh, three different options. Um, with the one option, one thing that we understood from both council and the public is accessibility is one of the things that, that needs to be changed within this location. Um, so if you take a look at option number, option number one, which is on the screen right now, Basically, we would take the mail wash and convert it fully into a um, accessible washroom, or what we call a universal washroom. So when you think about universal washroom, it's a bit bigger than a barrier-free washroom because of requirements for the adult change table. It's very similar to the washroom that we have at um, Castle Park. What we we would then take the what we call the female side today. We would put would make we turn it into unisex and put in full um, concrete partitions, floor to ceiling and doors that give offer more privacy than what with the metal, metal partitions that we have today. Um, next slide. Thank you. So one of the things we took a look at option two. So all three options incorporate the universal washroom within where the male washroom is today. And there's a, no, a number of reasons that we are, we're locating it um, within that location or keeping that static within that location, then the, the primary reason being if we go to any options two or three, it doesn't allow that flexibility to incorporate into the park side to have access along the park side as far as where the universal washroom, we would have access onto the park side, but we wouldn't be infringing with access up through the curling club or sorry, lawn bowling club side through their greens so um option two is a little different one of the things that is different it allows three water closets basically we're removing the water closet within the lawn bowling lawn bowling club and then we're putting it public facing or community facing on, into the park so it's a usable it's it's usable for all users of the park um basically if uh, a little history, a little history on the washroom within the lawn bowling club it is used primarily for um, the women. I, again, I already talked about that, but um, it is only accessed by the lawn bowling club members. If you move it outside, move that third option outside, is accessed by the park users, not only the lawn bowling club. This also includes a um, storage area for staff, so they can store they can. And, um, store uh, cleaning products, paper towels. We would then include the water heater, make that a bit of a mechanical room as well, have the access along that side. Again, 
um, La Moyne Club is um, losing um, some square footage based based on that. Um, next option, or next slide, please. Um, so this is where you see a, a lot of a, quite a bit of change. Um, again, that universal washroom staying um, static within that location, and then we're putting five water closets, public facing or community facing outside to the park, where it has um, basically everybody has their own stall. We had a bit of square footage to play with at the end because there was an existing wall. So that's why we said, hey, if we, if we had a bit more space, let's put that into washrooms, have a bit more of a family washroom. We've all been with kids um, or at the park with a number of um, the number of belongings where you need a bit more room um, for either changing, changing clothes, changing, um, changing babies, et cetera. And that's why we added that on. Do we have that, some of that flexibility to move that? Yes, we do. The other benefit of, of this here is when we're cleaning, we're cleaning a washroom, we have the ability to clean one washroom and leave the rest of them open. Also it allows us the ability if one washroom does go down, um, because if there's a leak or vandalism, we can just close out the one washroom and, and the rest of the washrooms would still be, would still be open. Um, so that does leave us some flexibility with that. In talking with the Lawn Bowling Club, they understand there is a letter included with, with, um, with my report, but they understand they are not owners of the building. They are somewhat, they are somewhat flexible. They do they do want to say what the final product is to make sure that it meets their needs at the end of the day. So some of the things that we talked about, um, they're concerned about noise of all the, of all the water closets, the existing water closets. What can we do to help dampen the noise? Um, where does our, does the kitchen really go there within the location or does it go, does it go somewhere else within the building? Um, talking with them, we, I, I think we as staff are flexible of where that happens. We want all the water, we want all the water, wastewater on one side of the building because, um, because we have to cut up the floor and, and put piping in the floor and that allows everything on the one side, which is great. Um, but there is some still talk, do they still have access either to one of the washrooms from the inside that their um, that their uh, female members can use um, that washroom from the inside. Those are all things. We didn't want to get down too many rabbit holes because I wasn't sure what uh, direction council wanted to take. Um, but as you can see by my report, Option number three is, is the preferred option um, because of the number of water closets, public facing or community facing um, that allows more users for the park. One of the things that we're starting to see, and I, I think is a lot of people can see that is the park is getting used a lot more. There's a lot more community events down there. There's, there's a lot more picnics and this here allows that better flexibility if, if that way they don't have to get um, basically Porta John's in to help supplement some of those events and stuff like that, because this would help with that, um, with, with that, with some of those challenges that we do have down there. Two of the other things or three of the other things that I did talk about by report, we would incorporate a foot wash station on the outside because if somebody's playing outside and they get dirty feet or whatever, they can wash their feet or um, have a water, water bottle fill station and a, uh, what we call a, a, a dog or, or a pet watering station as well. So if people want to take the pets down there, they could build the water dish or water bottles for the pets and stuff like that. And that would be all on the outside, um, all on the outside of the building. So to be accessible at any time, um, we would look at right now, these are the only washrooms that are open 24 um, seven within the town um, because of we have card locks or we have mag locks or um, timed sensors and all our other door locks. We would move to that location, we'd move to that same um, logic or methodology here to, uh, to reduce vandalism um, within, within the area. This is probably the, the park that gets vandalized the most of, of all the ones within the washrooms, um, ex, ex, including some of the activities that happen after hours down there um, within the washroom space. We, so we would love to have that um, um, to be, generally our washrooms are from eight till I think nine. Um, and then we would probably follow that same, that, that same schedule. All the parks are a little different because based on the use, but that's generally what it is. Opens at eight, close at nine. Um, and that's what it is. One of the things that the Lawn Bowling Club is, one of their concerns is losing the square footage. Um, one of the things, because they do have a growing membership, 
uh, one of the things that they, they did ask for, hey, can we accommodate them on the outside? Can we put up like a sunshade or something like that to help incorporate some of those, um, some of their members more um, for their for their meals and stuff like that? Can they go eat outside? Can we level out some areas and stuff like that? Can we pour some concrete or have some hard surface? And those are all things that we possibly take a look at. Again, um, depending on what direction council goes, if we go with option one, we really don't need to do that because um, we're not losing square footage, but if we go to option three, what's our what's our arcs and how we're going to about uh, this? Um, that's all I have. Sure. Okay, thank you. So this was requested of, of council to get more information with regards to concerns raised with regards to accessibility. So questions with regards to the washroom. Councilor Edney. Thank you, Worship. I'll start. Um, so let's go to option number two, and. Um, so I had a question and that led to a second question. Um, maybe it's just show it. I, I like option two, I like option three better because it has more things, but I'm trying to be reasonable here. Um, this kind of covers everything that option three has in a slightly smaller scale. But what I noticed was, and I don't know if it's intentional or not, maybe it's because we're only open during the summer, but there isn't an access from inside to any of these bathrooms, correct? Okay, so I feel like a door would be prudent. Um, and I realize that it's the summer, it's it's a summer activity. It's uh, it's not hard to walk around to the outside and whatnot. Um, but I feel like we have we will brush up against an accessibility AODA issue um, if we don't have some kind of accessibility, which means we'd have to change a doorway too. I think. To make the doorway inside accessible, including a ramp. And I realize it's a sporting facility or club of a sporting facility, but would we still have to be AODA compliant? Am I so, am I making sense? Thank you. Um, so we, we took a look at putting a door do we so on the on the universal side we looked at putting a door through to from the clubhouse to the washroom one of the things that we were worried about was security for the lawn bowling club because if somebody um we you, sure we can put a double lock on it or make it a double lock so people coming in from the lawn bowling club can access that washroom not a problem uh, but we were worried if somebody leaves the door open then the community facing side, somebody can go into access that lawn bowling club. Of course, yeah, lawn bowling club to make sure, and we were more worried about the security access, that part of it. Um, as far as your question about putting in accessibility for the club itself, um, the way the way I understand the building code is that I don't have to make that OAD compliant or accessibility and fully accessible until that time of we're gonna be doing work on that building or that door. So if I'm going to replace that door, it must be a fully accessible door. If we're not doing that, um, we don't have to make that accessible at that time. If that's a, if that's a direction from council, say, hey, you know what, we want this building fully accessible, we can put that ramp in. We can, those are all things that are easy, quick wins on going forward. Thank you, Grant. That's kind of what I, I expected, I assumed I would hear. Um, and of course, my, my thought on that is that if we're doing this now, why kick something down the road that's, as you say, yourself, pretty easy to do now. So if, if we decide on, on that, I would like to see, and that's exactly where I circled, where you said the universal washer would be the number one choice for me because it will be used inside here quite a bit less than from the outside. Um, yeah, that was my concern with that one. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Pridham. Thank you for your worship. Um, Okay, so I'm looking at uh, number three, which is all outside door accessibility for the washrooms. And I kind of like that because um, when you've got little kids and you can let them in the washroom and you can stand outside and wait for them to come out. But in the chamber where there's three stalls and two sinks, you're gonna go in with your child because you don't know who else is in that washroom. And that can be quite congested considering it's a playground um, area there too. So I like that 
outside accessibility. I'm wondering, and I think you answered my question. I was wondering why it was one, two, three, four, five on the side instead of four and leaving more space for the, um, yeah, for the lawn bowling. So why the fifth washroom when you could maybe expand the fourth washroom into that family size and then give the lawn bowling um, a little more space. I don't mind that the lawn bowling would walk outside and access the washrooms because their facilities only open during the times when it's open. So it's very limited hours and you've got a washroom there that could be used by the public for all hours when it's open if it was accessed from the outside. And I know it's a bit of an ask for them to come out and around, but for the ladies, but I think that that's maybe. A Sorry. Sorry, Councilor Pritam. I, I might cut you off there. I, I, I don't know if I hit my button. Um, so, so right now their, their membership is roughly, um, from what I understand, it's about 50-50 split on the membership. So, but even not all the not all the women use the inside washroom. Some of them walk, do walk out today. Um, but they were um, for the three gentlemen that we spoke with. They were adamant that um, we consider leaving a washroom on the inside, or taking a look at it. again. They're again they do have the flexibility because they can. The washroom is still there. They're not losing that washroom. They just need to walk outside and do that. Um, so. When we talk a look, when we took a look about uh, our our, de our determination or our idea was five versus four. So right now there's six fixture units down there, right? So there's three there's three on the male side, and there's three on the female side, and what we want to do is match that performance level of what's in the park today to what's going to be in the park tomorrow, and that's our determination of, of adding that um, last water closet. Does it have something to do with the structure on the inside? You said there was a, already a wall. No, it's an open space on the inside. Um, I haven't been so, in the building. Well, there is a, there is a wall. So at the at the end where you see that um, on option three, where you see that um, that nine foot where it says nine feet, there is an existing wall there. It kind of it kind of it's a bit of a separation between the two. But we have the ability to um, because it is a trough roof system. Is not there's no there's no supporting walls. We can we have the ability to, to change that and modify that. Councilor, yeah. Thank you, Worship. Um, in my mind, option three is far too expensive and it's overkill. I don't know that we need one, two, three, four, five, six washrooms down there. I it, it's just too expensive in my mind. But I think if you took this bottom triangle here on option three and transposed it to either option one or two, we could come up with something that's a bit more um, workable. You'd have the two doors out to the public. You'd have your universal washroom, which it could be a universal washroom slash family washroom in my mind. You don't need a separate family washroom when you've got a universal washroom, correct? I mean, and then the other two stalls on option three are just redundant in my mind. I, I just think we could come up with something um, more um, better costing and, and not overkill in my mind like option three is. So just to be clear uh, through your Mr. Council Luna, so you're talking one universal washroom and then three water closets facing the parking lot. You could have three if you wanted to, like you could take the third one from option three, this one, like do this L shape, transpose that to something else. But for the storage, can, can there not be found a space in the, the kitchen area that um, our staff could access for paper towels and whatever that they need? I mean, it seems to build a 30 square foot, what it was it, 30 square foot, yeah. 30 square foot storage area is kind of, again, overkill in my mind. I don't know. Or they can continue to take their products with them. So, so one of the challenges with taking the products with them, we're, we're trying to refrain that. We're trying to get away from that because right now where um, Charlene 
it, it, it's part of the bigger challenge that we're having with our custodians because right now all our custodians have product in place. So that allows us better flexibility if we need to drop off a custodian and they, they can clean from that location. And then, so we, they can clean from that location, they get picked up, they get transported to another location. They don't have to worry about um, taking the chemicals with them. That's one of the things it's, it, it makes it, the process on the custodial side makes things a, a lot easier if we have that ability to do that. Do we need square 30 square foot? 30 square feet, by the time you get a mechanical room, by the time, sorry, by the time you get a um, water heater in there, and by the time you, can we make it smaller? We probably could. Um, will we tighten up as much as we can? We will, um, but um, it allows us the flexibility to do that. The other part that is, that, that I wasn't, that I forgot to talk, that I mentioned, there also is no slop sink. So as far as when we're mopping and stuff like that down there, it, it causes bigger challenges. This causes challenges as well. On the side. So I, I guess my point is that, again, option three is far too expensive and overkill, but a combination of all of this could be put together, okay. to, to, you know, to give you your storage and public access and universal slash family washroom. And I think it could be done differently and more economically. Okay, thank you. Councilor Craig Ma. Thank you, Worship. Um, I'd like to say that I'm in favor of either option two or option three or any combination thereof. I guess my biggest concern right now was with the, not, the number of toilets and the sinks and what our holding tank and injector pumps will hold in that two inch line. Uh, I, I think that's one of my biggest concerns because I'm, I'm not a plumber. I'm not an expert on that, but it just, it, you know. Uh, however, I, I do believe that we do definitely need that uh, OADA compliant uh, washroom. So I'm all in favor of that. I have no problem with the uh, lawn bowling club come around and use one of those other washrooms or, or whether, but I do believe that you do need that storage space because you do have to put a hot water tank in there. You have to be able to service it. And then you have to be able to vent it or you need, so I guess is the electrical there all right? Do we have to upgrade any electrical work? Um, you know, there's these type of questions that I have, but like I say, I, I don't mind option two or three. I think three is expensive, but uh, I, I can see the need as we grow. However, if we have large uh, parties down there, you're gonna to have to bring in portable washrooms anyways. Council Pardon. Thank you for your worship. Um, yes, uh, Councillor Lou and I was thinking maybe that that extent of washrooms was maybe a little big, like too many. So if we cut it to three or four instead of five on that one side, I think two might be a little limiting. I think maybe it should be a little more than the two. Um, so three or four. Would be, and, and I like the fact that you've got a storage area for your custodial use and the water heater and such. Brent? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I just want to touch on Councillor Craig Mal, um comment about two comments. So basically the hydro system, there's more than enough hydro there. There's a 240 amp service that comes in because it also um, takes care of the lighting for the lawn, uh, the lawn building as well. That, that all comes through there. Uh, one, of the look, one of the upgrades is, I know one of the upgrades they're looking at doing because um, I think they have mercury halogen lights going right now, looking to go to LED, which will kind of help with that. Um, as far as the plumbing, we did have everything reviewed by a plumber. Um, he, they had no, um, by a qualified plumber, and they had no challenges with, with what they've seen. It kind of, it matches the fixture unit load today, as far as the six fixture units, as what we're proposing as far as the six. So, so he wasn't worried about um, daily flows and stuff like that, as far as, um, as far as anything coming into the bank. I guess I, I had a couple, if I can, Grant. So is it possible with these renovations that the building could be year round used or is it, are we still going to be limited because of the plumbing? And it, and it is a bit of a goofy setup with the run of the plumbing and, I, and we've had a lot of issues. So is it possible we could use this building year round or no? Uh, through your, to your worship, um, there is a possibility. Yes. So are any things we're talking about today, including that as far as insulation and stuff like that? No. Um, do we, can we make it, can we make, um, if the intent was make the whole building a bit more challenging, but if we want to make say one washroom or two washrooms year round use, uh, that's probably a little more doable because of 
Um, could we put electric heater in each one and keep it to a certain degree to make sure things don't freeze? Yes, we could. Um, again, it, it just requires like one, one of my footnotes within the report doesn't reflow. It doesn't include any work to the outside of the building. It doesn't include any cosmetic. Um, if we're looking to insulate one, we basically strap the outside block, put blue foam on it and include a heater insulation in the ceiling. Et cetera, et cetera. So it is doable. It's not a showstopper. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's one of the points. It'd be nice to have a, a year round washroom there because of, you know, trying to get more events in the wintertime. Um, I would like to try and see as many washrooms as we, as we can down there. And, and granted, I don't expect you to know it off the top of the head, but, but you know, what an approximate cost to bring in porta potties and, and what the building code says about numbers. And we talked a bit about this before. So for example, the, the recent pride festival, we talked about that in numbers because it, it is quite onerous, the cost for some of these groups and, how many would we have to get to to try and prevent that? You know where I'm going with this, and I and I should I should ask you this ahead of time. I'm sorry, but but even the farmers market and things where we're having so say the farmers market had a couple hundred people on a special event day. What what are kind of the thresholds and numbers? Because if if we can spend a bit more money up front and it saves our service clubs like the Lions and the Car Show, for example, these type of things, as opposed to having a porta potty. Um, it might be a worthwhile investment for the town. And, and I I should ask you this when we talked about this the other day. I'm sorry. Um, so luckily enough, uh, um, I have staff online here and then they're sending me some notes here, whatever. So, um, uh, so approximately an accessible washroom and I'm just pulling this from the top of my head. Um, basically a accessible washroom is a porta potty is $300 a month, rough cost. Um, so when we talk about bigger events, we base it on, um, so when you have the, the weird thing, like there's several weird things with the building code. One of the weird things when we talk about occupant load is about fixture loading for, for occupancies. So if you're going to have an occupancy that's uh, supplying food and alcohol, it's a lot different than if you're just going to have a gathering, meaning say you're going to have a picnic. So if you take a, a, a local event um, such as, as the Pride event, they were gearing 600 people down there and we, were, we did our, so non-drinking, again, long duration, they're going to be there for most of the day. It wasn't a drop in the farmer market, more drop in, drop out. Um, some of these festivals, it's a, they're down there for the generally the day. Um, they, they, they were scheduled to bring in six porta potties for that event based on the numbers they gave us to help with that or the numbers they identified to say, we're going to roughly have X amount of people. And then we go down our chart and say, Hey, this is how many, this is how many porta potties that we suggest. And for that event, it was six. Thank you. That gives me an idea. Thank you. Further questions? The only other question I have is, is, is if we run into trouble, the easement, does it go right through someone's, like, is it where, we, where the, the line runs? Is it in a difficult spot if we had to do replumbing or is it? So as far as, as far as we know, in the records that we show, it is somewhat accessible for us to do work on it. Right. But again, it's only a lot of it's a hand drawn sketch of, hey, we think it goes here. We think it goes here. Um, that's why we kind of wanted to get a camera to fully understand what that what was entailed there. Um, like when we did all the work at um, Caswell Park, we re we replaced all the infrastructure at the time. Like we replaced all the water lines, we replaced everything. We ran new water lines in the museum because we were digging up the park. We wanted to do it once. Um, and and that's the reason. We, we made those changes because we didn't know the data, the infrastructure, same thing. What makes this one a little different is everything seems to be working fine to the, to the, to the exit of the tank. Um, do we have the, so we're not paving anything where it goes, we can easily dig up and it's a lot more accessible. And then if we were digging up Caswell park, because there would be a service disruption because you'd be stopping activities in the park where this one here, it'd be more limited to a parking area and then up through the easement. And I know I'm not this, but I had one more. Just as far as the maintenance of the building, the town owns and maintains that building, right? So, so, and and we have an agreement that the clubhouse is for the exclusive use of the lawn bowling club, correct? Um, I'm not sure as was as far as the agreement and what that agreement is. Um, maybe Andre can talk about that a little more. Um, but what was the first question? Well, about the maintenance of the building. It's a, so, it's a different agreement than the curling club, for example. Correct. The, the town own and maintains the building because of a historical thing. So, so and, I, and I'm bringing this up because the whole point of access with the door is not a deal breaker for me because the reality is, is the town owns the building, maintains the building, correct. and the curling, or in the, 
the um, the lawn bowling club has a different arrangement through history than some of the other sports organizations, such as the curling club, correct. that pay for any improvements or any maintenance during the season. I just want to point, Andre, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's basically correct. I don't have all the details right in front of me, but uh, they, their their arrangement isn't necessarily a rent um, and a maintenance uh, agreement. We do all the maintenance on that. So we not only do all the maintenance on the building, we also do maintenance on the two sheds. There's two sheds on the property, a one by 10, one 10 by 10 and one 10 by 12. Um, when we're taking a look at the bigger picture and kind of sum it to where we got today, we took a look at say, can we, um, because what we're trying to do and what our goal is, we're trying to exchange square footage for square footage because that's what we're committed. That, that makes things a lot easier as far as um, getting to the finish line. One of the things that we took a look at, if we stand up, build a standalone building, where do we move the storage for the lawn bowl or yeah, for the lawn bowling club, do we move it where the washrooms are today? Where they have the storage and then inside, then we take that square footage from the two sheds and we create a new, do we create a new washing area based on that square footage? The answer is no, it's just not, just not enough square footage. So we also own and maintain the two sheds that are down there as well as um, the long bowling building. Thank you, I just, want, I just want to make sure that point was made such that if we need to take some space uh, from the main clubhouse, I, I think that, that I don't feel guilty doing that because for the betterment of the whole. So I think that point is important because we have other, other clubs that pay for every, every single improvement in, in buildings. Council Pridham. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm wondering uh, if we could have costs come back for plan number, option number three. So say um, because of the costs and it may be extraordinary, we don't know, but say uh, three wash washrooms on the outside, four and five. I'm, I'm universal, I'm not counting the universal. Universal's in for sure but having three, four or five and what the cost difference might be. So that might help us decide. We're gonna go through that exercise sort of in the next point. Grant, can you, are you prepared to get ballparks when we get in, into numbers in the, in the next slide? And, and so when we get into the ranking, I think Council Pritam, we, we can talk about it then if you're okay with that. So yeah, to, because I'm we're gonna have to set a budget. That might help us decide. For sure, but that, we'll do that in the next exercise to, sure. to try and prioritize. We, you'll have the ability to say, we'll spend X number of dollars for budget and then Grant, will you be able to work with that? Okay, yeah. Okay, so your point's well taken. Anything further with regards to Washington Council, Craig Mott? Thank you, Rizal. I think it's important just in case there's a, a lot of other people may be viewing this meeting that uh, Andre or Grant, can you, I'm sure it'll take you 30 seconds, just explain why there's never been any discussion about increasing that footprint of the building for washrooms? So, um, Early on in our conversations, we, we had to discuss with the conservation authority. Um, so let's talk about floodplain and what the, the flood level is. Um, so in conversation with the conservation, if I think, I'll, I'll, I'll do the long story. Right so basically long story is, or the short story is uh, conservation authority says you're fully under floodplain. You're fully under floodplain there. Um, it, the floodplain is roughly two and a half meters um, above the ground in front of the washroom. That's where the floodplain, that's where the top of the floodplain is. Um, and they basically said, we'll give you 100% for 100% square footage. Um, and there'll be, we'll just, we'll issue permit based on those numbers. If you go up and above 125%, um, you will have to uh, make a delegation to the board or uh, a visit to the board, but you'll have staff, you'll have staff buy-in. Um, if it's over 125%, um, it's a full on hearing and you won't have staff buy-in if it's over between 125 and 150%. So we're trying to keep in those parameters that we can, um, it'd be fairly easy, fairly uh, easy to get a permit from the conservation authority and not go above and beyond those, those, those square footages. Thank you. Anything further on the washrooms? Councilor Edney? Thank you, Your Worship. I just want to clarify something. You said two and a half meters, not you didn't, not two and a half feet, not two and a half meters. Okay, thank you. That is correct. Thank you, Worship. So Grant, talking about the Conservation Authority, um, I'm just trying to quickly read you. They want us, if we, if we do anything with the building, they want us to make it flood proof, correct? So is, is that cost included in your estimates with these plans? Um, so, <laughs> For, for what, what needs to happen or what's considered floodproofing within that level, um, 
that cost would be incurred within from within those numbers I identified. Councilor Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a quick question. Just looking at option three again. I'm I'm in support of of doors facing outside and individual bathrooms. The quantity again, coming back to Councilor Pridham's point, I, I think you can do a unit number per bathroom, but we can get into that later. Question is, though, you've got uh, you're gonna we're gonna give the um, lawn bowling club a 15 square foot storage area and us a 15 square foot storage area. Does that give us enough, or where's where I guess where's the water heater going to go in that in that option three situation because I'm going to assume in a 15 square foot that's going to be a bit challenging to plunk a water heater in there so through your worship Councillor Lucas uh, so these were these plans and these mock-ups were done prior to meeting with the with, with the lawn bowling club um, they they do not want that storage unit there they're not in favor of it because of um, it's not the right location, not the right size, a bunch of other challenges with that. Um, so that's like, once you, once you, you'll see the, um, what we're looking for is that we, we have those further discussions, start drilling down those, find out what would happen. So basically in this option three, basically 15 square feet would turn into 30 square feet. Um, and then everything would be in that space. Awesome. Thank Again, you. there'd be some flexibility. Do we really need that much for the washrooms? Do we need to make them a bit smaller? Can we make them a bit tighter to help save that space on the, on the long bowling side? That's all, all things that we're going to take a look at. Okay, anything further? Councilor Lula? Just a quick clarification. Um, our custodians clean the washrooms, but they don't clean inside the clubhouse. That is correct. Okay. Okay, any further with regards to this? All right then, so then we'll move on if everyone's okay. So the suggested motion then is that DEB 38 2023 80 Water Street North, the Platts proposed public washroom layout be, report be received for information. So I'm willing to move that motion. Moved by Councillor Edney, seconded by Councillor Luna. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Okay, now on to the tougher stuff. Uh, Andre, with regards to priorities, and would you please speak a bit to the challenges with upper temps too, just so council's aware of, because it's been a long drawn out process. And I just wanna make sure everyone's aware of, of, of the, the homework that you have done. Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, so as we started this project, and obviously we, we've kind of uh, taken a few maneuvers sideways on, on a few places, but uh, when we were starting off, uh, when we wanted to move forward was the idea was to develop the master plan and then within a master plan then you can start to have all of those conversations a little closer around uh this this facility for example if, if we did want to make it a little bit bigger a little bit smaller move some other uh some some of the other uh facilities that are on site to a different location or, or just have one location that master plan would then let you do all of that within upper thames as, as guidelines and have those conversations with upper thames um and and as, as Grant uh, mentioned, it, it's kind of like for like. So basically the square footage of buildings we have on the site today, we could replace uh, with in essence, the same square footage that's there now. And if you move that around, uh, Upper Thames staff could support that as long as you have the plans in place and you're not necessarily moving the water table and those type of discussions. Um, as we've gone through, we, we wanna do some of the things a little bit more priority for a couple of reasons. Number one, they make sense to do sooner rather than later, i.e. Uh, the, the accessible dock conversation. Um, and then second of all, uh, we're starting to run short on time and this grant money certainly let, let us to, let's, let's do some things now. Uh, so that basically led us to, we have to have conversations about the individual pieces. Um, so in general, Upper Thames has been great for us to have conversations with, but their rules and their policies are where the, the struggles are and you have to kind of go through those processes to get there. Uh, so on the dock side, uh, we, we we had those conversations with them. Uh, we weren't, because the policies uh, don't necessarily exist for, for municipal docks, um, what we thought was gonna be a fairly extensive hearing at first. Uh, we've had further conversations now and, and there's a little bit of mixed opinions on what that could be. And we've had some positive conversations about, well, if we submit most of the documentation that was asked for, uh, we may be able to get a staff approval. And when, when you get a staff approval at a board hearing, then becomes a much simpler, much easier process. Um, there still needs to be a hearing, but it's it's usually a little bit more refined, a little bit easier, as long as it's fairly supported by um, evidence, engineering, and and their staff, and and doesn't necessarily take away what they're trying to do, which is concern. 
conserve and, and protect um, properties from water and the water, uh, the flooding, et cetera. So, uh, so it's been a learning curve for, for a lot of us. Uh, there's certain things we're trying to do on site that they don't necessarily have written policies for. So that makes it challenging on their end as well. And we've also uh, led down this path of piecemealing this project a little bit as well, which, which may have been, uh, again, from a long-term perspective, we had all the time in the world. It may have been easier to put it all in one uh, exact piece and parcel, but um, but again, uh, we're, we're where we're at and, and we're lucky enough to receive that grant, which made things kind of move a little bit quicker, but allows us to do some of these things, which uh, hopefully that answered your question, Mr. Mayor, but that leads basically into this conversation is we received the grant for $250,000, which is about 75% funding. So our total funding envelope was $333,000. Uh, some of that money went towards uh, basically hiring uh, a landscape architect to help us with landscaping, some, some design. We've also got survey of the site uh, an engineering survey of the site. So we knew exactly all the elevations on the site. So some of that technical work has been done. Um, and then we also, if you remember last year, we had uh, a staff member uh, that was on staff temporarily doing a couple of projects. This project, also our wayfinding project, and some of this funding helped pay for that individual's uh, wages as well. Um, project managing, in, in essence, uh, some of these special projects that we had going on. So so about $49,000 of that um, is, is either already spent or committed in regards to that part of the project, which leads the rest, which is what we're talking about today. So in June, at our June meeting, we brought this forward to council. Uh, council gave us basically the priorities to concentrate on, which led us to today. And those priorities were the washroom facility that was just discussed, um, creation of a, a soccer field or soccer pitch, um, playground upgrades to improve the accessibility, and then lastly, uh, the improvements that would assist with the farmers, farmer's market. Uh, so item number one in the report was the accessible washroom. We just talked about that. We brought that forward as a, as a big report uh, separately. Uh, thank you, Grant. Um, the next was the farmer's market. After our meeting in June, we did meet again with the farmer's market. And you'll see in my report listed out some of their priority items, uh, which include hard surfacing for that farmer's market area. We certainly, and, and we actually noticed this when we were down there, a lot of uh, comments about people um, struggling because it is not a hard surface or some people are actually not coming back because it's not a hard surface anymore. Um, storage for them is, 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 is something that came up as well. Uh, the washroom facility, uh, as Mr. Mayor just pointed out, it was also something that that uh, was 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 discussed by them. Um, more shade and shade structure, which is why they like the space that they're at uh, right now. It does provide a lot of shade, but further shade in, in some of the areas of the park uh, would be helpful. Um, more seating for guests. Uh, people seem to be hanging around a lot more now that, that the farmer's market has moved uh, to the Milt Dunnell. Certainly they have more people that, that are attending the farmer's market, but also hanging around the area a lot longer than say they did in the past. Um, and then parking, they gave some guidelines around parking. So again, depending on where plans and the future plans go, they do want to make sure that that parking is still an opportunity for some of their guests. Um, and then trees, a uh, friend of mine, that, that nature aspect. Uh, so within what we've devised from the priority uh, items, uh, we recommend two of these items. Uh, some of the other ones we're already are, are also dealing with, i.e. the washroom. Uh, the hard surface piece. So again, hard surfacing that that just the one parking lot that they currently use and kind of the the the, the entrance into that parking lot um, is an option we're looking at. That uh, is about an eighty thousand dollar option. We've got a contingency in that eighty thousand dollar option in our conversations with Upper Thames. So uh, what happens now? Very much like a building, if you have a roadway or a parking lot uh, that right now is gravel, it's variable. It's 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 not really permeable, which means the water kind of flows off of that uh, parking lot um, and, and doesn't necessarily saturate into the ground. And, and again, in Upper Thames mine, in a floodplain, the more saturation of the ground, the better. That way it takes up more water and doesn't end up in the river and, and flooding uh, when there's, there's uh, larger uh, rain events. Uh, but because we've already got a gravel surface there, we can replace that gravel surface with, with like. Now, asphalt is a little bit more non-permeable than gravel is so we've got an engineer to give us some comments on that it's not an easy necessary calculation we're going to submit that to upper thames they may accept that it's like and like for like enough that they accept um uh, move forward 
in the event that they don't, what we're presenting or what we also can work with, and we've got a contingency in there for, is some low impact development, which means doing some work around the landscaping around that parking lot to basically hold water so that it flows slower into and down to the river. Uh, there's a few different variations of what that looks like. I'm not the expert on that. What we would do is uh, we'd work with the Upper Thames got a side group that, that does work with that and they'd give us some advice on the best case and try to do some, some, some calculations of how much water you'd want to, uh, to retain. Uh, we'd also use a little bit of what uh, we're proposing for the dock um, and the entrance to the dock around that as well, because there would be a path for the accessible path around that. So that is one option that we're proposing as a recommended option. Again, we've got a cost there of $80,000. We, we feel that that work can get completed um, well before the March 31st of 2024 uh, deadline um, uh, on that front. Uh, the next piece is not necessarily a pavilion, but we had talked about some storage, temporary storage sheds. I included a picture because um, the more we've talked about this, the more people didn't really know what we were talking about, but a, a general picture uh, in, the, in the report of a, of a storage shed that also can double as a market shed uh, in inclement weather or some of their markets that are serving food. Um, something like this can be used that, that is a little bit uh, better for some of their, their vendors. They could also use this as storage and close it up and lock it up. Uh, we can temporarily move it in and out and in different locations as we need it. Uh, we've also talked about uh, possibility of using uh, or having winter markets in that space in the future. These type of sheds, if you go out to uh, Toronto or any of those uh, winter markets, this is the type of atmosphere that there's the things that they use for those. So again, this might be a start and test of, of what that looks like and what that could become. Uh, and then we've also just talked about uh, having somebody, uh, our tourism student use a, a shed, something like this to have some tourism information, but also for the Yak Shack rentals, uh, those, th those type of things. So again, uh, some, some other opportunities that uh, a structure, small structures like this can, can afford us. And again, they're very easy uh, to maintain, easy to pull in and out um, and don't necessarily, and need a, multiple purposes. Uh, quotes on those can be fairly flexible, but about $3,500 um, a structure. Uh, we've recommended three or four, but again, that could be um, depending on where the budget goes at the end. And we'll talk about that in my report. Uh, that certainly can go uh, up or down as, as we have budget for. So that's the recommendation there that meets what we feel is the most important pieces of the farmer's markets um, needs. Um, and then also had, has some flexibility to the site uh, as well. And we've talked to them about that and they were pretty happy to hear um, those options on the table. Item number three that was in council's priorities is the playground. Uh, so you'll remember when we talked about the playground back when we were discussing the, the, the formal plan, it was nearing that 20 year life, which is the typical life we have for, for, for our, our playground structures. Uh, we had public works and the parks crew kind of go in review, uh, take a look at that site or at that playground structure just to see uh, what its life looks like. They feel that they could extend that life to about the 25 year period uh, based on the quality of the, and the that that's there now and, and, and the maintenance that they can do on that. Um, so, so with that, that leaves about seven, seven and a half years left of, of life there. So let's not waste that. Um, the other thing we looked at was and got some quotes on is looking at the accessibility of that. Um, and accessibility moves in different ways when it comes to playgrounds. Uh, but a better product is the engineered kind of wood fiber, kind of wood chips that you see in, in some areas. That provides us to kind of flatten the area out, make it a little more accessible, make it a little bit uh, better, even from an upper tem standpoint, because they don't like that kind of pre-gravel that we have in the area, which washed away um, uh, a little bit more. Uh, it's easier to clean public works like that they're going to that in most of our uh, playgrounds moving forward. It's easier to keep fresh and new and clean um, and maintain uh, moving forward. And then we would also add an accessible swing feature uh, that basically adds a little bit to that, that, that park now um, and adds an accessible piece to that. And the quotes we have on that are around $29,000, uh, which is um, not as expensive. Uh, and that's, that's us doing a little bit of work on our own from the town staff's point of view. Uh, so that's kind of what we proposed uh, looking at the, the playground structure at this point in time. Soccer, lots of conversation around soccer. Item number four, obviously soccer is a hot uh, commodity in town this year with, with the drastic numbers uh, for, for youth soccer. Uh, community services obviously has been having a lot of discussions around uh, soccer, uh, where to put uh, future um, soccer pitches, where, the, where they belong. 
the the general consensus is Milton is probably not the best spot for a permanent soccer pitch because uh, it does have some some concerns and some issues and you start scheduling a lot of those soccer areas that that happen to get cancelled it does mess with with the, the schedule um has you know a few little little safety or concerns or some just not the greatest space but adding it as a temporary location practice location pop-up net location is a good option also having it as um, kind of an option for us to use uh in the interim as kind of we see what's going to happen over the next couple of years with soccer registrations and also uh they begin to do their master plan and decide and determine where the best locations in town are uh for 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 soccer um in general as we see what that growth and that 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 need looks like. So we've included $9,000, which buys us some nets, um, allows us to do a little bit of work there, but but it doesn't necessarily do a lot of the lot grading, a lot of the work from that perspective, but it does buy some nets, which then um, can be kept there um, year round or, or um, annually, or it can be moved to other locations if we need to, um, I, they wouldn't necessarily need per permanent nets um, at that location. And then lastly, while it wasn't in your list from June, it's something we've talked about here on a couple of occasions is the accessible dock. And as I kind of was talking earlier, um, uh, the mayor, uh, CAO and I did have a, a conversation recently with senior upper Tem staff just to kind of get some clarification around kind of what we're hearing, uh, where we're conversations we've had. And, and we did get support from upper Tem staff that if we provide um, in essence um, a good plan in regards to the engineering side to make sure that we're comfortable with that dock not necessarily floating away an anchoring system which are things that that we, we we would look at anyways and also our emergency plan so again the municipality is held to a different standard than say a private owner whereby uh we can say and we have the crews and we have the the, the resources to if a storm is coming in that's going to be drastic and, and and we get those uh those alerts uh we can certainly have our crew go in pull that dock out and make sure it doesn't necessarily float away whereby a private individual while they may say that they can put that put that plan together they may not have the resources to be able to do that with municipality we have staff on on call uh, at all times and, and we could do that so we put that plan together um so in essence if we put all that documentation together they feel that staff can review make some comments but probably would be able to support it which means going to a hearing is a fairly um not as robust and expensive process where we need to have a lawyer in a full hearing uh, we can go there present our case staff would in essence support what we're saying um and and then uh, hopefully we get an approval that way so we feel a little bit more confident that approval could happen based on where we're at uh we i, I did actually receive all of the final engineering docs yesterday so that information has all gone to upper thames informally at this point what we're doing is we're sending that information to them informally here it is um take a look let's meet uh we will then have some conversations around little tweaks and changes that we need to make and then we'll put together our formal uh, submission um, and go through that process and we'll know a little bit more about that uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks as we move forward so we have included the doc as part of this priority package um, and that you'll remember we did receive uh, support from community living uh, to $35,000 for that doc which then um, the remaining budget is $46,000 that we've included in this priority list, which includes uh, the purchase of the dock, uh, work on the on the landscaping side, and then the engineering that, that we're working on now um, as well. So so again, that that number may, may may come up a little bit or down a little bit as we go, but that's kind of the numbers we have right now in regards to the dock. So those are the council priority items that were uh, that, that have been discussed in the past. There's three more items that we added to the list uh, that that just through the conversation might make some sense. And I think I mentioned at the June, June meeting. One is Lawn Bowl. Uh, obviously, we've been having lots of conversations with, with the Lawn Bowling Club. Uh, they have some ditch boards, so which basically is the surrounding of their lawn bowls um, is deteriorated. They went to apply for a grant this year. Uh, they are not qualified to apply for, for grants because they're not incorporated. They are working on that now, so they can can get uh, uh, grants in the future. They come to they came to us to partner with us on a Trillium application to to do this work. We were not able to so to help them out with the Trillium application because we're already working on the Trillium application uh, in partnership with the skate park folks. And you're not allowed to have two applications at once through the Trillium grant. Um, so so they they've got some quotes for that work. 
we've included it here as a possible option. It does fit within from the layout of the park. It would help certainly from a, uh, they are growing, but there's also, they also gave me their booklet of how many tournaments are there are for Lawn Bowls um, province-wide and that, that book is a lot thicker than I would have would have expected. So there is some opportunity from a tourism aspect. There's certainly a lot of people there watching. Um, so helping with those ditch boards will allow them to use all of their pitch, which they're not necessarily using today because of some of the, the concerns they have with, with those dish boards. So that's about a $7,800 touch. It's included in here. Again, that's one of the options, depending on where we go with all of our funding um, uh, can move in or out. Um, site furnishings is another one. Uh, this is something we've talked about is just adding, again, those uh, replacing and adding uh, picnic tables, benches, garbage receptacles, uh, bike locks, those type of items. This is one of those items that's fairly flexible, something uh, certainly spruce up. We've heard a little bit about uh, if, yeah, depending on where the budget is, we can add or subtract this budget. Uh, we've estimated about $30,000. That would give us a, an ample amount. Uh, but yeah, and that, that equipment's fairly expensive, a thousand to three thousand a piece, depending on, on which way you go, whether it's the metal or whether it's the kind of the, the, the PRC plastics piece or, or something like that. But it's also fairly quick and easy to source. So again, this is the item in your budget that, that is fairly flexible um, and can be done now, can be done later, can be done in the future uh, as funds become available. It is one of those items we've included in there uh, that allows that budget to move up and down. And then the last one, number eight, is we talked a little bit about this in June as well, is uh, again, a lot of discussion around naturalization of that area, uh, the plantings, but also some conservation piece. And we have talked to Upper Thames is if we gave you an allocation in regards, would you have a team that can come in place and just um, add in a little bit of trees and naturalization, but also um, add some conservation education signage, et cetera. Um, and again, was just a, a good news story, a partnership as you will, as we're working with Upper Thames on this project. Project, uh, we think there, there's again some collaboration that can happen there and this would be a, a good gesture to uh, for both of us to work together on, on assisting uh, that site as well again that number is fairly flexible we included ten thousand dollars in our original numbers um, but again that number depending on where our conversation goes um, around the budget is is fairly flexible so those are the eight items in essence for council to discuss so happy to kind of stop there mr mayor just to see if there's any comments questions about the items and then i can get into actually the financial piece of it all um, and, and detail uh, that out. Okay, thank you. There's a lot there. So just for clarification, we'll have a general discussion. Councilor Allward. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so Andre, my question was just if you had any discussion with the UTRCA about this temporary storage and shade sheds and anything like that, because I was wondering, like, would they be able to be propped up and taken down in such a time where if flooding wouldn't be a concern at all? or if they were there, if we would have to somehow flood proof them or if we wouldn't be allowed to have them at all. So, so through the mayor, a uh, good question. Uh, we would deal with it uh, very much like we deal with the Act Shack now. Uh, so their, their big issue will be um, how heavy is it? Can it be secured um, to the ground? Um, and right now with the Yak Shack, what we do is we have a, a big concrete block that it's that it's attached to and then we do a similar uh, type uh, arrangement to that. Okay. And they're they're okay with that. Yeah, sort of and as long as it moves out in 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 the fall and doesn't stay there uh, during high high flood season, then then that again, I, I can't actually confirm. We've had the conversation. We, we right. put in our plans. We haven't had a specific conversation, but it would treat it very similarly to how we treat. In theory, it. they're okay. With and they'll that. have a, they'll have comments on how close it is to the river as well. In yeah. this case, we're not putting it uh, mm -hmm. near near the river's edge. At Great. All. Thank you. That's ready. Thank you, Wisha. <clears throat> My question goes a little, just a little beyond this, but I, I want to talk about long wool uh, uh, wooden gutter boards. Um, so I assume there's a membership to be part of this, and that there's a that there's some kind of um, maintenance uh, in place with uh, the organization. And we've held other organizations uh, to account. We want to make sure that they that they're accounting for their membership fees and using them correctly. Is this not something that I almost feel like it's it's a standard maintenance? It would fall within the, the it's responsibility of the club itself to do it. I, I don't have an objection to it being part of it, but I just um, if it's if it's something that should be perhaps looked at from the lawn bowling organization point rather than from town doing it. 
Uh, so through the mayor, uh, again, good question. Again, the arrangement and the agreements with Lombor are a little bit different than we have with, with other, uh, other groups. Uh, it has been a fairly small membership, so their, their, their funds are, are fairly limited, uh, their equipment rather expensive, i.e. The, the, the grass cutting equipment, et cetera. Um, so in talking to them, they did not have the funds. They have not had the funds to do this for a number of years. They have been looking for grant opportunities, uh, the latest one being, being Trillium that they didn't apply for. So they are taking some steps to, to, to deal with that their members they have told us their membership is growing from the 25 30 members to around the 60 membership uh, now and certainly they, they, they've garnered some some interest uh, over the last year year and a half uh, but yes uh, again that that certainly is is, is is a council decision it's here as an option that we brought forward um, if 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 the priorities don't lend to this then then you're right they'll have to look at other options or look at next year uh, getting a grant etc with with next year being the 100 year anniversary, I, I want to see this done. I, and if the funds aren't there for them uh, at this point, uh, because I imagine they'll be holding more events in the 100th anniversary year than they normally do. So um, I, I, I'm keeping it fairly high in my priorities, um, but I'd like to see it as a partnership more than just straight up, yeah, some kind of partnership with a plan in place. Councilor Craig Mark. <clears throat> Thank you, Rizzo. Andre, my question is really, I think what I read in your report and what I heard you say when you were talking about hard surfaces kind of confused me a little bit. So in your report, it says staff can remove some other non-permeable. So my question is, where are the ones that you're going to remove if you're going to do 100 square feet of paving, where are you going to remove the non-permeable? But in your report, you said that once you get rid of the... Uh, 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 the, the gravel and then difference in permeation and then doing something at the side. So now I'm just not sure exactly. Yeah, through the mayor. So our, our best case scenario our, our, and what we're, we're moving towards is to pave that, that parking lot and use other options to, uh, to, to meet Upper Thames' requirements. Um, very much uh, worst case scenario is if that becomes a top priority, if you have uh, what you could do is, well, if we have a piece of the roadway, if you, you just just like the, the conversation that happens around around the path and when we when we discussed and made the long term plans is if the road is, is X wide, you can reduce the, the, the width of that road, gain yourself some traffic and then you can build maybe a path along as long as the net value is the same. Same here, if, if it's deemed to be that uh, the paving is 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 X amount more non-permeable than, than the gravel that's there now. There's a calculation we would do and you have to remove maybe X of the, put grass somewhere else. And there's there where, is there somewhere else where we can take a little bit of what's gravel now and then put grass there. We prefer not to go there until we do the long-term plan, uh, but that would be certainly the option they toss to us. The other option to consider is, is you know, changing, paving that over there, but making somewhere else a little bit of grass. And then you, you've met that net, net zero threshold. Uh, we haven't necessarily had those discussions as to where that's kind of our last option. If, if it gets pushed that way, then we'll kind of try to find uh, options there, but we don't think we'll have to go there at this point in time. Yeah. Thank you, Marcia. So I think we're at the point where I've been trying to get us to, is are any of these decisions linked to the decision about the ring road? Because you're, I think you're hinting at that. And, and I'm like, what comes first, the, the road or the pavement? Like, I think we need to settle on the ring road issue first before we can decide any of this other stuff. Because if, if you're paving, not you, but if our paving of the, the market area is dependent on whether that ring road exists, then I can't make a decision about the paving of the marketplace. So through the mayor, so no, I don't believe any of these priority items uh, do. Number one, they really keep the the area right now very similar to what it is. Uh, even the parking lot, what we're proposing to pave is the exact parking lot that's there now. We're not looking at making it bigger or smaller. The the long term plan and the ring road conversation is, is separate. What I just mentioned was, uh, yeah, we could remove uh, some grass areas in, in other locations. We'd rather not do that without the master plan. But what this determines, actually, what what these conversations and this short term priorities uh, determines is these 
parts and amenities in the park are going to remain what they are. For example, if we decide to do the washroom facility, we're not going to necessarily upgrade that facility as part of a long-term plan. If we pave the parking lot where the uh, farmer's market is today, then in our master plans, whatever we do to those designs, that paving we're not going to necessarily remove. We'll remove it as is and we'll work within uh, those areas that we that we have. If we make upgrades to the playground in your master plan designs, you're not going to see that playground move to one location or the other. So so I guess to answer your question, uh, Councilor Luna, is, is this determines a little bit what your master plans look like, but it doesn't necessarily affect the grand scheme and doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily affect that, that ring road conversation at all, in my opinion. Thomas? <laughs> Any further questions, comments? Councilor Critter. Um, yeah, thank you, Councilor Lunar, for bringing that position up because yes, the ring road is, is something that we will, um, we will not compromise by a parking lot at this time. I don't agree that we should. Um, the native planting that Upper Thames would propose, uh, as I was reading comments, um, and I think they're very valid, we don't want to obscure the view of the river in any way. So those native plantings or those plantings that they are proposing to do would be um, something that would be very low uh, growing at the river and then maybe something else beyond, but we must maintain the, the river view. Okay. Andre, can you speak to what the planning is? Yeah. Uh, and we haven't designed what that plan looks like. We've heard that same comment. We've obviously seen it in the survey results as well. So certainly comments that we would make sure that, that we deal with. Further questions? Grant, can I ask a tough question? How much do you save per fixture ballpark for the washroom? You've obviously probably done some of that. Like, they're, they're obvious, I don't think we have consensus just from my like judging between two and three here. So, so to, to knock a, to knock a, like say to lock, well, let's call it a bathroom group. If we're gonna knock a bathroom group off, you're only probably looking at saving probably, I'm guessing um, maybe about 20K. Thank you. Further questions with regards to the priorities? Where's everyone at in terms of the list? I mean, I guess the next question is, Andre, if, if we had to fund, so say we decided to do everything, there's, there's, a, there's an overage of $100,000, how would we fund it? Yeah, through, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So you'll see in the options uh, that, uh, and sorry, they're listed option two, option three, option four. Originally, the, one of the washroom options was status quo. Um, uh, so, and all I've changed in those three options is, is the cost of the washroom. So again, to, uh, to the mayor's point, if you go to the, the option three of the washroom, which is $150,000, if we do everything else that I've stated, as I stated in the report, uh, you, we, have, we in essence have about $103,000 that we'd have to budget. So uh, these facilities or the playground, the washroom are facilities that we own, we've, we've, we've invested in in the past. Uh, so the logical place for any of those extra funds to come from is our, our capital, our general capital reserve. Uh, we certainly have enough funds in there to, to fund something like that. Uh, there are some enhancements and, and you'll hear me talk at the budget meeting coming up in August about our capital, where things stand, what our asset management plan looks like a little bit. We've done some preliminary work on that. Um, and my, uh, just, to, just, to, just to kind of steal my thunder from, from a month from now is you, we've seen the cost of construction go up significantly. So what has that done to our overall replacement value? And, and really what I'm gonna tell council at that meeting is the cost has gone up substantially. We've been able to put more money away for capital expenditures and capital savings, i.e. our reserves. We've also got extra grants coming in. We've in essence stayed the course. We haven't made headway of where we'd like to be, uh, but we also haven't moved backwards, which is what a lot of the expectations are when the cost of paving as an example in this project has almost doubled. Um, 
So, so we are still in a, in a decent place. We've made some good, good moves in 2023. There's still a lot of work to do, uh, but uh, an extra $100,000 for this project that deals with some of our current assets isn't necessarily, it's not a concern if, if we had to go there. We have a couple other reserves that we, can, we, we might be able to tap into on the recreation side for the playground if, if, if need be. Um, there's also other options within this report that can be moved up or down. And, and I've listed all of those within uh, again. And where I came up to keep a fairly, uh, you know, it, it might be hard to find and save the whole $100,000 without really taking a pretty big hit on your other priority items. But there's probably 30 to $50,000 that can be shaved off of, you know, uh, with making a few decisions around, um, you know, not as many market sheds um, or, or, or lowering the tables and benches, the, the accessories piece, and we can do that at a future date. Uh, you can take a look at the, the gutter boards for lawn bowling. You can also look at that tree conservation area um, on that front. There may end up being a little bit of savings on the parking lot area, but I don't know that and can't tell you depending on where we have to go with, with that, that extra work. Um, and then the accessible dock is the other one too, that, that there, you know, we've got a little bit of a, a buffer there in regards to um, uh, the lid work, but but we'll, we'll see where that goes to. So, um, so a couple of options for you is you can approve as is, and, and the budget will end up being plus or minus uh, where we go. Uh, you can choose obviously some of the other options. Option two, and and this wasn't necessarily planned. It's just the way it worked out. Almost meet the budget exactly of where where we were. Uh, but you could also set what you want, want that budget to be for uh, for the washroom and we can work within the means to, to, to fix the rest of the budget um, accordingly. And I'm, I've got my spreadsheet up and we can work through that together uh, as we go through uh, if need be. Uh, but that's kind of my, my comments around th there's a couple of areas where you can certainly move those budgets up and down a little bit if need be. Okay, so thoughts with regards to the budget, Councilor Luna. Thank you, Worship. So if I'm understanding Grant correctly, each washroom is 20K, correct? Is that what you said? So in round numbers, yes, but no. So and so what I mean by that is once you're once you're cutting up floor, like the first washroom is gonna be the most expensive because you're cutting up the floor and making that, making those items work. And it's just um, you, you're getting some efficiencies by doing a number of, of other washrooms is what I'm saying. So if you're gonna remove one washroom group, I would say the price for that one washroom group is would be roughly 20 grand. So I, I, I'm having difficulty here because I'm kind of, I don't like option three, it's too expensive in my mind, but option two um, bumped up a little bit, um, kind of puts us between 50 and 150 there in that ballpark, if we could get to a, 100k for the washrooms somehow with you know but but the recommendation is suggesting option three which i'm not sure why that was thrown in there like that to... we, we did it because it's you know the, the laundry list of priority items truly those are council's discretion um but it is our job to make a recommendation for council to chew on so you have something to debate so from staff's perspective this was put in there as the best technical option if it gives you the most fixtures, it gives you the most everything, right? To the mayor's point, there, there probably isn't consensus right now on the design and the layout. Um, what you might want to do is just pick a budget number and just say, staff, you have $75,000 for the washrooms, go work with that and come back and you can't exceed it and go work, work within that. Because we can, even Grant and I today, we could sit down and find three more sub options in each of these options you provide because it's just all about moving pieces around. It just might simplify your conversation to just give us a total budget number for that washroom and then we'll work within that. That's what I mean. So to Andre, if, if we if we settle on a, a washroom budget of 100K, say that would put us of an over of an overage of about 50K, is that correct? That we would need to take from our capital funding, which is acceptable to me, but I don't know what that is. Uh, through the mayor, if everything else, as as we stated, stays the same, exactly about fifty thousand. Councilor Craigma, <clears throat> thank you, Worship. If I go to the uh, table that was nicely prepared for us, showing all the the different eight items here, it's on page twenty. 
when I look at the difference of almost all the options there and showing that we're meeting budget, which is what you've listed here is option three. And then when you go to option four, where it's all the washrooms at 150, <clears throat> that's the assumption that everything's going to get approved and we're going to be able to spend these funds by March 31st. I'm still highly doubtful about the uh, parking lot. <laughs> So if that parking lot couldn't get done this year and you move the 80 over, you'd get all the washers. You know, and, and I think, I really believe that that's a consensus we have to come to is, is there anything here that you don't want? And then depending upon what you hear, because I think what I'm hearing even from Upper Thames is you might be able to say in a letter that we want items A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, but you're going to have to do each one individually so they can tell you that this is good, this is good, this is good. Go away, get more data. You know, you can't do one submission or I think it'll all fall apart. Andre, your thoughts on, you know, I, I think he's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, through the mayor, I obviously have been more optimistic on some things and, and, and have been wrong. I have been wrong a few times already through this process, but um, it actually brings up a very strategic option in regards to this. If, if, if and certainly staff have talked about it and, and, and option three for the washroom renovation does make a lot of sense long-term for, for many reasons. Um, so strategically by pulling the parking lot, uh, it, it, it in essence balances this budget. Um, and again, we can tweak a few of the other small items to, to make it work and then allows us to move forward with that project using some different budget. We, we do have, uh, and I don't want to steal public works budget, but we do have an annual resurfacing budget that, that we use. We have our capital reserves and we can move that to a, a town, uh, town, uh, a town project in a sense, if everything goes through and, we're, and, 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 and we are successful, we'll continue to move it forward and we can claim whatever we can claim on the balance of this grant to use all the grant funds we can. If it does get pushed to next year or, or whatever the case may be, uh, we'll deal with that as part of our budget and part of our allocations. Uh, but it gives you a strategic option that um, we're not gonna leave any funds on the table. If the washroom uh, takes a little longer, if the paving doesn't get approved, it does allow us to, the best option to use as much of those funds as possible. And, and without us coming back to you come uh, December 31st saying, God, we're not gonna get uh, X or Y done. So what else can we do? So so from a strategic point of view, uh, actually Councillor uh, Craig Mull brings up a really uh, a good option for you to consider. As long as you were considering increasing the budget overall, anyways, that's probably the best way to do it. Councillor Pridham. Thank you. Um, Okay, so I look at the soccer uh, nets, and I think that that could be um, added to next year's budget planning. We could remove it now because I doubt that those things will be going up um, this year uh, before next summer. So that could be eliminated now. And that would give um, Rec and Leisure a chance to look at location and where it should be. And maybe it, it will be there and maybe it will be temporary and moved later but uh, I think that could be taken out now. Um, when you look at the allocation for tables, inventions and such, we've got $30,000 there, but we don't know, we don't have the final plan approved or what the park will look like. So we don't really know what we're buying. So until we see that, how do we, how do we spend that money? Um, you know, I, I heard uh, park bench or park picnic tables that are accessible so people can actually just slide in instead of having to climb over the standard picnic table. But um, I think that could be later as well when we have a more defined plan for that park. Um, so that's 30,000. And when we look at three portable sheds, I think one would be a good start. Give the, um, the farmer's market their one shed and see how that is used and how that um, transitions to more sheds or not more sheds. Um, if we do need them for um, uh, you know, our, our yak shacks and rentals, well, then we would add a shed because it became necessary, um, but not just to buy three and just say, here you go. You know, one, I think is good start. Um, and when I look at the tennis courts, and the pickleball, pickleball, they have, you know, just the shared use of one shed. And farmer's market is a Saturday morning thing. So uh, to me, three seems like a lot. 
So I would go to one there and then leave um, the bathroom at, at the full uh, opportunity, the full number three and come back with um, a number for that. So I'm thinking number four with the removal of the, the soccer. So that's number four, the um, allocation for the benches and such. Yes, but as needed, which we don't really know at this point because the plan's not done and removing two of the sheds just to one, one shed. That's where I'm, that's where I'm at. I'll just add uh, one thing, just uh, we did some accounting uh, on the accessible dock because of the donation. Um, what we've done is we've, we've, we've applied the donation to 100% of the town's portion of the grant. Um, if we play around with those numbers, there's about $15,000 that can be shaved off of this budget um, as well on that front. So I've done that in my um, my calculations, but um, so, and then adding uh, what Councilor Pridham just said, uh, it basically brings that difference up to about $52,000, which is what we talked about earlier. Thank you, Worship. I'd like to see some of those potential savings that Councilor um, Pridham mentioned put to the playground because I don't think a, an accessible swing makes us accessible. I mean, there's a lot more we could do there. There's, there's a fair bit of uh, real estate there for that playground. I, I think we could do better than a swing. And I know that equipment is expensive. So I think some of those savings should go be earmarked for the playground to bump that up and truly make it accessible. I don't think a swing makes it accessible. Lucas? Thank you, through the mayor. Um, I, I guess I look at this and we, we've got to start somewhere. Um, and to me, the accessible washrooms and upgrading that it makes total sense. And then we go from there. The playground equipment, we have seven and a half years left. So we know in seven and a half years, we're going to have to replace that whole thing. So instead of trying to piecemeal a swing or this, let's stay status quo on that. And that may not be the popular choice, but let's stay status quo on that, knowing that in seven and a half years, we need to revamp the whole playground equipment. We can revisit at that point. Um, the accessible dock to me, I think is, is, a great opportunity for us. And then considering the donation on top of that, I think we're, we're silly to, to not pursue that, I guess. So, so that's kind of my, my thoughts as far as picking and choosing through there. We, we, we can't have everything. So I think instead of trying to have little bits, let's, let's, you know, the accessible bathroom, the option three to me looks, looks good. And I think it serves our purposes. Can I just ask a question of staff? So, we're gonna make a recommendation to council for overall budget, but what is your thoughts in terms of how this will unfold? Because you know, respectfully, there's some pricing and stuff that's that's pretty rough, especially you know, we've asked for some changes and stuff. So, for example, if, if we because I can I can see a real debate trying to pick out what is and what isn't. And if we took your suggestion and pulled out the eighty thousand dollars, for example, is it the intention that we would come back and, and through a series of reports this fall? Because we are the clock is ticking, right? And, through a series to make decisions within the budget or Andre, how do you see this unfolding? Yeah, good, good question, Mr. Mayor. And, and from, from whatever happens today, we would all move forward uh, in individual. So, so the accessible washroom grant would move forward, uh, start doing the final designs um, and then get that quoted out. And at that point in time, you would, we would bring back a report to council that says, okay, we've, we've got now our, our, our request for quotes or a tender process. Here's what our budget was. Here's what the final cost is. And council approved that just like you do on any other normal capital projects where we set the budget, it may be plus or minus, And that comes back for, for council for approval. Um, the, the two projects that would go through that process are the washroom and, and the paving side, because we're going to, those are both over $50,000. We'll come back to council for, for an approval process from a procurement standpoint. Um, and then everything else uh, would be basically we work within budgets and it might be plus plus again plus or minus uh, a minimal amount, um, knowing and, and us watching what that but that whole entire budget is and you're absolutely right these these continue to be budgets, most of them are in pretty good shape. Um, but there is a couple of unknowns when it comes to the, the, the washroom and, and the parking lot, as, as, as you know, that, that might come back a little bit different than where we are. Although we've used estimates from, from today's dollars and, and cents than, than we uh, would normally in a budget process, we might be a year and a half out uh, before we're doing that work. Um, 
but again, there will be opportunities. And again, uh, as you'll also see, we, we, we're going to bring forward in August kind of a capital uh, summary that shows how our capital projects are trending towards our budgets, et cetera, and, and that there's always a plus or minus there. Uh, so I think we would take the typical pro uh, process that we do and we, we basically let council know that we're, here's the overages we're, we're seeing at some point, obviously you have an opportunity to, uh, to, to ask us some questions around that or make some different decisions if need be. Okay, because I don't see a consensus at the table and the reality is, is the funds need to be spent by the end of March next year, which is the key is, which is why we've been pushing for this process, correct? So, so yes. Yeah, so as we move forward, we certainly on a couple of these items, the washroom and the parking lot, uh, namely the accessible dock, we're, we're, we're trying to move that forward. We've already, got, in essence, gotten approval from council to move that ahead uh, in the past. Um, those are the two that have some, some, some work to need, that needs to get started sooner rather than later to get, get to the finish line. There are other projects that become a little bit easier to do and quicker to procure like tables and chairs, uh, the playground equipment's fairly, uh, although there's a, there's a public works component to that, that would need to be done kind of, you know, later this summer need to be known so that they can get that work done in the fall. Uh, but those two uh, absolutely, if, if we're gonna move forward, need to move, need some decisions today so that the people planning the work can, can get that started. Otherwise we're, we're, we're gonna be really tight for that pipeline. Thank you, Worship. Um, I'd just like to ask Councillor Lucas, are you suggesting that we eliminate the playground equipment at this point altogether for the upgrades? Uh, through the mayor, um, I, I would just say that that's a, for lack of a better term, a massageable item. Let's see what we can do. Uh, again, based on, on Mr. Moran's comments, uh, I think we the two big ones we need to chase down here are the washroom and the parking lot. And if all of a sudden we can't do the parking lot, we've got $80,000 there. But yeah, let's move forward with, with, with other options. But, but I think we need to focus and we need to give direction on those top two if, if that's where we think the priorities are and, and see what the situation is. I guess my thought is with the playground, it, it, it's, it's something we can... Again, I don't know, but I know it's something we probably call up and say, if we need a swing, we're going to change out the, it's a fairly simple process. So I think that's, that's one of those ones we can, we can give and take, but, but to get the funding spent, I think we need to prioritize, uh, prioritize what we, what we feel is the priority. Further comments? Thank you. Yes, I, I think that the accessible dock could be added to that because those um, the the parking lot and the dock are Upper Thames Con River Conservation Area approvals, right? And that needs to move forward. I would like to see the lawn bowling gutters um, as a priority. There, it's their hundredth anniversary. They've been, uh, you know, been running along on their own there for all of those years. And I think it would be nice to support them in that and make that facility just a little bit um, better usage for them. So I would like to see that done. I guess there's a lot of variables here. So I, I would like to see, I would suggest, and again, if someone wants to support this, that we list the priorities top to bottom because otherwise um, the, uh, I can see if we set numbers to these, you know, it, it we're, Act, especially in the washroom, we're asking for some changes here. And respectfully, Grant, you know, there might be some things you don't know, right? You know, we can't expect you know, our CBO to know everything because it's an old building, right? So I, I'm just wondering, rather than crafting the motion as, as it's put in terms of dollars, that we do priorities and go from there, Mr. Kittner. So through your worship, you, I think after getting to the point, we're starting to spin your tires a bit. And that was exactly what I was going to suggest was that you just, just like we do in budget, you go through these one by one, it can get consensus on what the top priority is, and tell us the budget amount and get consensus on that. And then we will use that to craft the final resolution um, to help you overcome some of the budget issues. Like something like, um, you know, the $30,000 for tables, benches, and receptacles, those are all consumables, right? So if we're not on budget, if grants thing comes back at $10,000 more, that's one of the last things we can buy because it's easy to get and we can just adjust the budget based on that. So yeah, you create, you approve $30,000 for those today. We're not gonna run out and buy them today and sacrifice the rest of the budget. Right. If if, if washroom comes in at ten thousand more, thirty thousand more, then maybe that's one of the things that drops off the list, or something else does. Like these are it's all very flexible and malleable, uh, massageable. I think is a great a great word. 
Um, so I think I think you're exactly right. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm your worship, I think you walk council through a consensus of what priority one is, tell us what the budget is for that, and Jenna will start amending the motion. What's priority two? What's the budget for that? What's priority three? What's the budget for that? And just create our list and then we have our marching orders. I would like to see us walk down that path if everyone's amenable. And, and then, Andre, there's going to be a lot of reporting back on this project anyway, because I, you know, respectfully, you've run into a lot of obstacles through this whole process because of outside agencies commenting. You know, we don't need to name them, but anyway, it's just uh, our whole plan out of the gate has been changed drastically in terms of, of, of what's realistic and what's not realistic. So um, I'm, I'm open to suggestions as, as to going down the list. And Mr. Kemi, you want something you want to add? Yeah. And if you just give us 10 seconds for efficiency sake, we'll do it like we've done in the past. Jenna will put this into a Word document. We'll put it up on the screen so you can see it happen in real time yep. so that everybody understands understands what we're talking about. Just, so just everyone, give us 30 seconds to crap a base motion yep. for you. Yeah, sure. Is everyone okay with that? So we'll prioritize. Otherwise, I don't think we'll get through this because there is unanimity and, and there is some flexibility. And I think the motion needs to understand that there will be reporting. There's going to be give and take in this, Andre. I think you and that's, that's understood by staff. Yeah. yeah. That's right, Nick. Thank you, Wisha. So I think our top three are our top three. We're united. We're unanimous in the top three. Sorry. Yeah. Do it. Let's just adjourn for five minutes and then we'll, we'll re revisit this tonight because I think we can get through it fairly quickly. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, is the Z still up there? That's the Z. I think you may have just minimized it by accident. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. No, it, it may have just, uh, you may have reached over to say something. And, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, I think so. Everything, but yeah. I think I have a question for first. I know. I know it's funny. I didn't know. Because I talked to the, you know, the guy with my job. But like I said, I went down to Kirk's My catch reason asked me last month to see eight people. Fifteen of them running. Oh, well, that, I, I, I that guess, but I, the, on the same page is this thing about trees and, and all that. You know, well, oh, it, it's so almost no idea. I know, and, and absolutely, well, there's got to be a no idea. I do all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But that so is there, right. I when I go around there, I go around there like at least three times a week. I rarely see seven cars that are one out of them. Oh, really? Yeah. People are parked in the road or car. Oh, the Denver day I went by, the day I went by was a really warm day. Yeah. 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 No. The day I went by was a really warm day. So to that, I was thinking that's what it was. Because when I noticed three of the cars, and this was what shocked me, three of the cars were in the parking lots. The other 15 were on the road. Um, and only... So the, the, sorry, I, so I should rephrase that because three in the parking lots didn't have anyone in them. So they, they weren't running. So there were three that weren't running. So of the 18, there were 12 that were running. So there were 12 that were running. But I counted the long that thing. And I, I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked at that many people. I mean, it was warm. Granted, it was warm. Yeah, but, nice down there. Like I, I park. Mm -hmm. I've always been, normally I've got the dog with me, so I put all the windows down and yeah. the breeze just go all those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the issues with
Okay, we okay to resume? Okay, Jenna, have you drafted some? And, and Brent, do you want to speak to about soccer just right out of the hop here? Because there's a lot of moving parts and some information. And I talked to Brent about this this week. So do you mind sharing? Yeah, so that's, the conversation is definitely emerging there, right? So this has forced it, and as well as our housing conversation. So community services, um, you know, their advice would be soccer, soccer from a theoretical perspective sounds really nice along the river. I was emotionally attached to that myself because I used to play soccer down by the festival and in Stratford, it's great. But the reality for what we want to do with, with the park is we want to program that park with events. So having regular programming times for soccer down there is just going to be a conflict. You're going to constantly be ca canceling soccer. Um, and then there's just like the, you know, the more practical issues of it being wet and there being lots of goose droppings. Soccer is an emerging sport in St. Mary's and, and community services is actively planning right now budget, you know, adds to the budget next year to improve our current pitches and then to start looking at where we put more. And when we look at, you know, absent the recreation master plan, you know, the, the current philosophy is, is we have reciprocal agreements with the schools. The schools have lots of green space. And in some cases they already have established soccer fields like Holy Name. The schools will be our first and most natural partner where we put them because there's already soccer fields there. And uh, now that our soccer association has jumped up into being a you know, tier two program where it travels, almost all other centers have it as a central complex. So we already have a central complex down at Meadow Ridge Park. Um, and now we'd be looking at creating other central complexes at DCBI and then likely Holy Name as well. So in, in one respect, Councillor, it'd be nice to maximize some dollars here, right? Let's, let's spend $9,000 on something for soccer. I'm just not sure right now community services could tell you what that something for soccer in the future would be, um, but it may not be yet necessarily at Middle Field, which then doesn't meet Andre's grant criteria. So there will be money in next year's budget to increase, you know, all of our outdoor playing surfaces increase their level, whether it be baseball diamonds that we have to touch up or whether it be soccer pitches, but that might be definitely an area where you look at and you say, okay, that $9,000 really just doesn't make sense today, given what we really want to do with the park and make it, make it that programming event space, tourism space. Okay, so there are many questions on, on the suggestion where we go. Jenna's going to put something up and, and I think the exercise we need to go through is to prioritize and then the understanding with staff is given variables to Councillor Edney's point, I think we're pretty clear on the top three. I mean, we might all agree in the order, but the reality, things are gonna be driven by budget as we go through. So I think we should prioritize down the list and then we'll have a discussion and go from there. So I'm open suggestions for number one. Grant, did you have something before you started? Flat and fly, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting, actually. <laughs> Councillor Pridham, do you? I would like to put the washrooms as number one. I don't know that it's on. We have consensus on that one. Okay, open to suggestions for number two, then. And that would be option number three. Yeah. Washroom. Oh. Councillor Nunes, do you? Well, further to. Um, Brent's comments about soccer, should we just take that out altogether? We, we can, if, if that's a consensus. Absolutely. I think, until, I, I think we need more information from, you know, in terms of the, the overall plan. So I, I think that's a good, good point. I'm, I'm amenable to that. Is everyone else on the same page? That's okay. I'm open for number two. Accessible dock. Accessible dock. I would. <laughs> we have thirty-five thousand dollars, I think, Andre, so far it's worth it. And I think clearly, I have heard from the public that there is a, a real need for that. I mean, we're victim of our own success. The, the ad check's been so wildly, so wildly successful that you know, how come we don't have an accessible dock? It's even an accessible dock that wildly. Um, well, is everyone okay with that then? Number three, I'm open to suggestions. I put the playground. Playground. Any other comments? Dr. Edney? Yes, thank you. Where Councillor Lynn and I are almost 100% of the time on the same page, I'm not on the same page with this one because I think we can probably get a separate grant for playground closer to the expiration. I feel we'd almost wait. And I understand the idea of bringing in the accessible, but you almost shot yourself in the foot with that. I sorry, shouldn't address you directly because it's not completely accessible to get to that accessible swing. So to your point, um, so I wouldn't put it three. I think I think the paving 
of, or, or, or the non permeable or permeable surface for the farmers market might be a good one because there, as we do this, there will be more uses than just the farmers market for that surface. There will be other things we do with it. Councillor Albert. Yeah, and that's that's my view on it as well. I think that. I think that you make a great point there is actually being able to get to the playground is like borderline inaccessible like I've seen at the pride event there were people like with walkers trying to shuffle across that, that gravel and I think that's awful I don't want to see that anymore so I agree this should be a higher priority than that. Other thoughts. We probably don't have consensus, but do we have a majority for. For the paving. I suggestions for item number four, Councilor Pridham. Lawn bowling, wooden gutters, boards. Okay. Comments with regards to that? Councilor Redding? Um, just to reiterate my point, um, th there might be a precedent set for us co covering 100% of that cost. Mm -hmm. um, I think on the back of the 100 year anniversary coming up, It'd be a great time to have a fundraising goal of five thousand dollars really not a huge amount i'm sure if there's 60 users they're related to five people in town each who would all be willing to put in a little bit of money towards it I, i'm not i don't want to it's not that i don't think it's priority i absolutely think 100 is priority but i also want to show other user groups in town that we we have the same parameters you know when when we when we put forward money for the skate park you know, what percentage of their overall budget are we putting forward? Um, you know, is this the kind of thing that probably should have come to us in the granting thing back in November? You know, we need this done. Um, we cover 25% of it. So I'm all for it. And it can go on the list. I, I don't care. But I really would like to perhaps maybe have staff say to them, is there something, you know, you guys can do on your end? And plus, it'd be great publicity for them to be running a campaign. So apart from just having skin in the game, it's going to create awareness of it. And they might end up getting 20 more members and they might end up even more fiscally viable than they are now. Anything further with regards to the priorities here? Councilor Craigman? I'll agree with Councilor Pridham. I think it, I understand exactly what Councilor Redby is saying, but I, I believe that we're taking away some of their clubhouse. And it was the council of the day some 25 years ago that did this long-term lease that uh, uh, I think we 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 have to carry on, and it should be upgraded. Okay. So I'm on board for point. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So lawn bowling club boards, and and council is understanding that this will be revisited as per budget as well. We we could end up going through this exercise again, just to be clear. So that's just not finalized. Council did that. Along that point, you wish. Uh, I'm really having trouble with seeing that 150,000 with the washrooms in there. I would really like to see something come back that's around the 100,000 mark, but that's just my personal. I think we can do what's needed for a lot less than $150,000. But... Grant, can there be some flexibility in the proposal when you come back to council? Yeah, so it's all part of the procurement process. We'll, 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 um, when we write the RFP, we'll probably we'll probably do it one or two ways. What I'm thinking is that we'll have a um, minimum number of like washing groups, probably being four. Then what's the cost to add the fifth? And probably add a add a disclaimer on the bottom to as an add on to the RFP and go from that. Bring that back to council. Yep. Very helpful, Jenna's now put up your total. So you, you have $30,000 to spend essentially. 30,000 left, yeah. To stay on budget, if you choose to stay on budget, yes. Councilor Craig Mount. Yes, thank you. I'd like to see the uh, trees and conservation education. Before. Other thoughts, Councilor Luna? I'm still pushing for the playground. I think that playground needs improvement the, the the surface of it those stones are not conducive to, to children running on them and i mean it's not accessible and it needs to be if, if we're paving the, the 
farmer's market, then something could be made to go into that playground to make it accessible and a few pieces of whatever. Yeah, can you speak to that, please? Well, yeah, and, and I feel like I'm not being helpful by not explaining this full scope. So wood chips are an accessible surface, to be clear. Like, so just everybody's aware, like that is, that is, it's not the most accessible surfacing, but it is accessible. And when Jed plans to do this, they do plan to pull all the curb away as well. So right now you have to jump over a curb to get in there. So all the curb would be pulled away, wood chip, all the piece would be pulled out and then the wood chips would be, would be put in. Um, so I think the swing set itself is only about $3,000 and then we did install it ourselves with our own labor. So wood chips that end up costing the most and then there's some labor in there as well. Um, so to Councillor Lucas's point, yes, it is like you're, you are kind of massaging or you're, you're band-aiding it through for the next seven and a half years. Again, the, the question always becomes is there's seven and a half theoretical years of life left in it. But when you go down there, look at that structure, there's nothing wrong with it. So is it, is it going to rust significantly in the next seven years? Is it going to fail in the next seven years? Probably not. As long as it keeps passing inspection, you can go beyond the life as long as it still meets some CSA. Um, so by putting wood chips in, it then at least gets you a, an improved accessible travel to each of the features there. The features that we have in the park itself are, would not be currently considered accessible. But even when you look at CADZO, um, there's a swing that's accessible, so that big round one. Um, I know the drums are considered accessible. Even it as our accessible playground only has like one or two or three features that are truly accessible. Um, so this is to make it to its improved accessibility and to add at least one accessible feature so that it kind of gets you through, say, seven and a half years, I'd say probably 10 more years. That's, and that's, a, that's what his plan is. So you would, you would have the ability to get there um, with no curb, and then you just have to decide whether or not you add in a hard surface pathway or something that to connect it. Okay, so we've got trees and playground. Councillor Craig Ma. Thank you, Your Worship. Did I, from what CAO just said, is doing so the playground removing the stones not to put the wood chips in is that part and parcel of what we need to do to get approval for paving the no okay thank you okay <laughs> thank you okay again so so prioritizing we have trees or we have the playground thoughts other comments absolutely not. I think we've got a lot of trees down there and we don't have an accessible playground. That's my stand on it. <laughs> Why are we planting more trees when there's, it's already a natural parkland? And what about children that need accessible playground? Councillor Edney. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'll go playground on that too. And of course, I'll trust in our staff that they will make sure that we're not spending money where we're going to be spending money again in seven years. Does this create you know, if, if in seven years or 10 years, we replace things, but this is 10 years old and this is 25 years old. And so I will trust in our staff as I always do to decide what elements, if we're putting any elements apart from the wood chips in, has something been asked beyond that? The other part of the scope of work is to put in an accessible swing set. Right. Um, but again, so Jed's, Jed's in the process of buying one of those for, uh, uh, for Kin Park, they are, the material cost actually isn't that much. It's the install cost and our, our staff can do the install. So this, essentially what you're doing, what he's priced out here is buying materials and then our, us doing all of the labor. So you would, you're gonna increase, you're gonna increase your accessibility of the playground because you're gonna put, P-Stone really isn't an access, is not an accessible surfacing. So you're gonna put a more accessible surfacing in something that would qualify and, and meet the test of accessible surfacing. And then you're gonna put a feature in that's definitely accessible. So you're, I think you're you're definitely checking the box. And other thoughts, Councilor Pridham. We could go accessible playground and then tree conservation and education. But I do want it to be noted that the trees planted, as I said before, are something that's going to enhance the park and not take away from our river view and access. That'll be part of the discussion. Yeah. Councillor Owen. Uh, I'd say that I'm comfortable with really either. I mean, like if it's cheaper hypothetically now, cause I mean, playground equipment hasn't really gotten cheaper in the last few years, if it'll be cheaper just to do some now and then the rest in seven to 10 years, I mean, I'm fine with that. I think that 
In terms of the trees, I think, wasn't it a big priority for the farmer market to have more shade of some sort? Wasn't that something that they had talked about in there? Yeah. So I don't know. I think the trees are a good like 10K and then I'm, I don't know. I can't predict the playground equipment market, but maybe it is fine if we just get a swing on there. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I see a split here in terms of um, direction. Councilor Edney. Thank you, I just wanted to comment further on that. Um, so this is just the first iteration of this. We are going to do quite a bit more as the years go by. And I think that an overall uh, uh, plan from a, a botanist isn't the right word. What am I looking for? Arborist. An overall plan from an arborist for, for when we decide to engineer where where trees and what go is, is important. So that having been said, I think it, that is why I would push it behind the playground because I think we have a lot more to look at when it comes to engineering nature than putting in an accessible. So I think there's quite a bit more work that needs to be done with the let's plant some trees. So I would, I would prioritize the playground first. Councilor Craig Mountain. <clears throat> Thank you from my perspective. And the reason I've got the trees there is I think the arborist and whatnot that we're going to uh, count is upper Thames because we're going to them to ask for all these other things. Right. Uh, my view is I want to involve them. <laughs> yeah. Further comments? Uh, we don't, there doesn't seem to be consensus, so I'll entertain a motion for what number five would be then. We'll go right to a vote. Councilors, then. Um, are we going to be able to plant trees before March 31st next year? There's, there's a point. We, we can put in playground equipment before then, but I don't think we can plant trees before then. When we devise that budget, so sorry, through the mayor, um, we think there's certainly some plantings that can happen. There's also some conservation and education as part of that budget as well. And, and, and so again, those are discussions we can bring forward. As you allocate the priorities, we will start now to, again, continue to investigate what, what Upper Thames uh, would suggest in relation to that. Um, and knowing that our, our timeline is March, 2024. Uh, but as, as already been said, depending on where the future uh, goes, uh, there will also be uh, different options brought forward in, in future as well. Absolutely. Your Worship, are you wanting a motion to see what number five would be? I, I think so. I think that's, I was, I think I would, that's the way we're going to say. That's my suggestion to settle this, yes. I would put forth that number five be accessible to playground upgrades. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Councillor Edney, discussion. Sure. Uh, after actually like working it out in my head, I'm fine to wait seven to 10 years for the playground. I'd put trees to higher priority. It's achievable and we can sling some fall trees down there. Yeah. Further comments? Thanks for the mayor. I, I'm, I'm with Councillor Craig Mile on this. I, I think we, we, we're going to Upper Thames to ask for a lot. I think if we have the opportunity to give back and engage, I think that may go a long way. Okay. Further comments? All right, I'm going to call the question then. All those in favor of number five being the accessible playground? Okay. Opposed? Number five is the accessible playground. Yes. <laughs> Burn. Okay, number six, can I just assume that it'll be trees or are we? <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to record a vote on this. Or <laughs> yeah, we're going, uh, will be trees. And again, this is all gonna be revisited because right. everyone needs to understand right. if there was, we're not over the hurdle respectfully of paving yet. Um, so there may be a lot of money for trees yet. So, and landscaping. <laughs> so um, this is all subject to change. Okay, so then, Number six would, would be would be trees in terms of priority. Yes. Okay, Brent. And again, just to make this simple, um, is there anything else on the list that you can foresee prioritizing? If not, then I would just say instead of allocating a specific number, say balance of budget. There. 
in, instead of allocating, because you're going to put yourself over over the budget there, and, and that's fine. That that's your choice. But you could also just say balance of budget, because then it gives us as staff pretty easy. We don't start working on that to the very end, right? So if if all of these things come in over a budget, and we don't have any money left, then there's just no money left. Thoughts on that? Suggestions? Yeah. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So then. Councilor Luna. Yep. Sorry, I don't mean to drag this out. So we, we're saying lawn bowling facility at 150,000. Yes. We're not saying option three specifically. Okay. We're, we're, option four is what's going to come back to us, correct? For an upper limit of $150,000, but hopefully less. Um, through your worship at Council Luna, that's the direction that I'm taking that will come up with a hybrid method, a high, hybrid model between the between right. the two that fits within the budget to make sure that we have uh, accessibility and then add as many fixture units as we can. Is anybody agreeable to putting a hundred to $150,000 budget in there or is that not specific enough? No, okay. Councilor Edney? Um, so thank you, Worship. Just, this is about semantics actually, nothing, nothing more, but if, number one, rather than calling it lawn bowling facility washrooms, can we just say the Milk Donald Field Park washrooms? That, that way it doesn't look like it's being directed towards one group. Yeah. Okay. Okay, where are we at? Any other discussion with regards to what we have up there? So then if there's nothing further, then um, I'm gonna read the motion on the screen then and see if someone willing to support that, that COR 42-2023 Milt Dunn project report be received and that the strategic priorities committee recommends to council, the council direct staff to proceed with the following Milt Dunnell priority items. Number one, Milt Dunnell field washrooms with a budget up to $150,000, accessible dock 61,283. Number three, farmer's market paving $80,000. Number four, lawn bowling, wood and gutter boards $8,000. Number five, accessible playground upgrades $29,000. Number six, trees, conservation, education, balance of 333,333 project budget, which is the amount that we need to spend with regards to the grant to achieve a 75%. The staff consult with the St. Mary's Lawn Bowling Club prior to finalizing the design for the washroom upgrades. Okay, so I'm willing to move that motion. Moved by Council Allward, second by Council Lucas. Discussion. Okay, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? The motion is carried. Thank you. Grant, are you clear on everything? Okay. Andre, is that fair enough? Yeah, okay. All right, moving on then. So the next item is with regards to the future uh, revitalization project and where we go from here, an overview of the engagement results, which were quite lengthy and long-term plan discussion. Andre, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I thought that last report was gonna be the easy part of the day. Um, so a lot of information, obviously, in front of you in regards to the engagement, tremendous amount of people commenting, uh, not only on the survey, but online, obviously, you uh, folks are hearing it from a lot of your constituents and, and emails coming in. So uh, people are passionate about this project. So, um, so now that we've kind of gone through the priority side, and, and that is the, the priority to get the money spent, I just want to premise the start of this conversation is there's a lot of information here. Um, do we want direction today? Helpful to get direction today, but this doesn't need this doesn't have a timeline attached to it. The the the, the long term plan, um, we're, we're not going to be necessarily doing that work um, in, in the short term. It's again a long term look. There'll be grants in the future that we'll apply for or future budgets. So uh, there's a lot. The idea today is is to provide council with the information that we've summarized. There's all kinds of ways we can also resummarize some of that information. Not that we want to get to that, but if you have questions and want to see data in a different format, we can look at that. Um, but also get some general direction. Uh, but if, if if you need some time to, to review and, and think about this, the decisions today don't necessarily need to be made today. They can be made a month from now or two months from now. Um, and as we get into budgeting over the, the next couple of years. Um, 
But having said that, a lot of great information in this. Uh, just just kind of give a quick reminder. Uh, we launched the survey on May 27th. It ran for three weeks until June 16th. Uh, we received 1,350 responses, uh, most of those becoming uh, online. There was 19 people that submitted the paper copies of the survey. Uh, one point I want to make is the survey had a 66% completion rate, which means people opened the survey, looked at the survey, uh, but didn't necessarily fully complete the survey. That is normal. Uh, this rate was a little bit uh, what I'll call lower than, than in some, but we listed here uh, the downtown service location review as an example had a 69% uh, completion rate and then the skate park survey had a 79% completion rate. So again, uh, that, that is fairly normal to see a lot of people open up survey, uh, go through it, but not necessarily fully respond. Most of our respondents were local, 87% uh, local, 13% were, were non-res. Um, and again, uh, you'll see we have the data in the summary, at the beginning of the summary, you'll see all the data uh, by age category for age, age gaps, the people that, that uh, filled out the survey as well. So going through, um, going through the report, and this is where you can share a screen, Jenna, if you want, I think it's just easier for people to see some of the information um, on here. And again, all I'm gonna do is kind of just regurgitate a few of the main points um, and, and some of the summarized information uh, we did. I'm not gonna go through the 66 odd pages uh, of the comments that, that council would have had in front of them uh, for the report. But the first, uh, the first main question was, what type of activities, amenities do you enjoy at Mill Dental Field? And this was important for us to gauge kind of what we're seeing um, how people are using the park and the facilities uh, today. And as you can see from that chart, um, the walking uh, trails, the farmer's market, and the attending events were, 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 were quoted as, as the most popular, whereby lawn bowling, baseball, and other uh, is, is, is the items that people chose, chose the least amount. And you're going to start to see that as soon as you get down into the more narrow or more specific activities, uh, like, like the sporting facilities, uh, sporting items, those type of items are getting a lot more specific use and not necessarily broad based use, uh, whereby the, the, the nature of the walking, uh, the more just outdoor enjoyment is, is certainly trending both on how people use the park today and also how they want to see or use the park in the future. Those are kind of what we're seeing in, in some of the results um, as we go through there. On the other category at the far right, uh, some of the things we heard, um, uh, 32 people said uh, drive the park, the ring road, driving around the ring road, uh, 10 people are enjoyed uh, surrounding, uh, just surrounding relaxation, um, enjoy the surroundings, um, nine or so was, was group gatherings, and then it kind of falls off significantly from there, it's just some general comments which are in our, uh, are in our, our report. Uh, so next slide, Jenna. The next one was around the concepts. And again, our idea here was we would develop the concept to kind of generate that discussion um, with some different amenities and different, a uh, different uh, feel. And one just kind of get a sense on what, what people, what resonated with, with those, those concepts. And you can see very, very close results uh, when we look at this. Uh, when you look at the chart, there was 408 respondents that uh, liked overall concept A. Uh, 395 that liked overall concept B, and then we and I, we listed in here the blanks because uh, it was important to do so. But 470 people left that blank of, and then we had people that left it blank, but also added a comment. So when we asked the question, we asked and why. So we wanted to kind of understand why they they like one concept or, or another. Um, so 76 folks that that left it blank, their answer to the comment was, we don't like neither option. So that's why we listed those 76 in here as well, just for, just for council to see that um, uh, as, as we move through. You can see the age groups there uh, didn't find a, a resonating uh, number one way or the other when, it, when you looked at, at the age groups. I mean, you can see some... Um, some areas where, where you see a trend, but overall it was, it was fairly consistent around, around those answers. And then um, the other comment I wanted to make is when you look at the comments, and there's a lot of comments, 325 comments in relation to concept A, and then another 322 comments in relation to concept B, a lot of good information in there. So, so certainly, if you, I assume all council has looked at a lot of the comments and, and why there wasn't a lot of consistent things we can pull out in generalities, other than to say that concept A 
uh, people like kind of the amenities was more for all ages and they liked the sports kind of concept through it. Um, and then concept B, as expected, was those that really just like to the quiet nature, uh, th that's kind of green space and like the idea of, of the gardens and, and, and a bunch of comments around, um, we like that baseball is no longer on here because it's not needed in, in, in that area of the park is kind of what we heard from, from a lot of the people that were, were on concept B. Um, but overall, um, no conclusion in this regard other than to say there is a mix of opinions on what people want and do at that park which is again important for us to know um, that's what what this is what's going to make this obviously difficult as we move forward how do you please everyone because everybody seems to have different uh, ideas and opinions on what they want that facility to be used for at different times of year so so that's kind of where 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 you look at uh, question five and question six was part of question five which was why and explain and those were you'll see all those comments and we've summarized those comments in in those pages kind of we've tried to uh, identify them in groups put them in groups for you to, to know uh, to see what that that information is saying uh, next slide jenna number seven is is probably one of the most uh, important and again a lot of information a lot of information in regards to to this part of the questions and this is where we were looking at um opposite than what you use the park for now, what if, in essence, what do you want to use the park for in the future? And uh, I'll just kind of summarize that, um, as I said earlier, the, the, the areas like basketball, baseball showed fairly neutral results. So again, those are very specific items. Same with the band shell and the event guarding, the bistro seating. Again, those results show re relatively neutral uh, pieces. And sorry, I should explain the chart. The way, the ex the way we asked the question was um, rank, rank these on very important, which is the orange. Um, important is the light blue, neutral being purple. Um, unimportant being the darker red or orange, and then a very unimportant being the darker blue or green, uh, depending on how you see that color there. Um, so, so again, the ones I just mentioned, ba basketball, baseball, um, Danshell, Event Garden, showed fairly neutral um, in, in regards to that. Um, on, on the other side, those areas where we found that over 70% of respondents either had them ranked as a very important or important were um, more of those uh, items that were kind of in the nature side. So the tree canopy, the river viewing areas, the pedestrian trails, the washroom, which we've talked about, the youth side of the playground uh, being an important one, the picnic areas and the accessible dock. So that is where we've seen a lot of positives um, whereby the, the, the very important and the important really outranked um, the either neutral or not important. And then the one point I will make is the river viewing areas was the only one of these items that very important was the dominant, um, the dominant area. So again, what this tells us again was a lot around uh, more broader, more natural, more self-guided in relation to the park. Uh, again, a lot of lot of likes across the board. Everything was was very positive. Uh, just again, there's, there's areas that are more neutral uh, than others. Uh, next slide, Jenna. Uh, this is obviously the, the contentious one, the, the very and, and very interesting results. Uh, certainly what you're hearing more from a verbal standpoint uh, and what we're seeing on uh, in relation to the um, uh, to some of the social media posts we're seeing is we, we specifically asked the question, do you agree with creating a pedestrian only portion of the ring road? I'm sorry, Jen, we'll bring that back up here in a second for us. Um, in the survey, we had, uh, we had 920 people respond to this question. 58% of them either strongly agreed or agree with changing a portion of the ring road to be pedestrian only. 14% um, were on the neutral and then 28% uh, strongly disagree. And again, in, in, in the reports and in the detail, you can see that by, by age group as well. On the chart that I have up, I show that the blue is is 30 under 35, uh, 30 red is 35 to 54, and green is is over 55, and then the purple is just uh, people that didn't identify where, what age group they they belong to. So again, fairly consistent um, there. There was a group in the I think 45 to 55 where it was a little bit more on on the disagree side when you when you looked 
um, at those numbers. Um, but again, it shows a much different pattern than I think what council was hearing verbally or what you're, you're certain and in and, and, um, and hearing. So, so again, um, just stating what was put in, what in the survey um, as, as far as results. And then number nine, if you go to the, oh, I don't think I have a slide for number nine. And then number nine was basically an open-ended question where we wanted people to just identify um, what's missing, what did we miss, what other amenities outside of this. Um, we found a lot of duplication um, in regards to this question where, where it was uh, stuff that we've already listed or they already commented on in regards to amenities. Uh, but the ones that weren't there, and this is kind of where the ring road conversation came up again, 99 people made the comments that um, the ring road is an important amenity that they want. They want um, natural and greenscape, um, and no minimal changes were, were kind of second on, on the top of the comments when you just kind of try to categorize those comments at 48 and, and 34. There was a few new type of amenities that weren't um, were on the radar. Um, water sports boat launch received 34 comments. Water fountains received 30 comments. Ice rink skating loop received 28 comments. Um, pickleball had about 15 comments. Exercise equipment, which we actually heard in person quite a bit at, at the farmer's market had 14 comments. Um, so again, we've kind of listed all of those comments in, in, in generalities just for, for, for you to see on that perspective and, and that list is there as well. So again, um, there wasn't anything dominant that came out that we didn't think of. There were, there's a few areas certainly that, that you can tie together and add to some of the amenities that we were proposing as, as we went through and a couple of ideas that, that we didn't think, uh, think about that, that certainly came out uh, in some ideas around uh, public art, technology, those, those type of things. Um, the other thing we did was we attended the farmer's market for two weekends. Um, Councillor Edney joined us for about half of the session on, on the second uh, Saturday. Uh, and, and what I will say is the comments we heard in general, and again, uh, all kind of different comments as, as we heard through. Uh, but what resonated with me really was, was number one, we're happy and thank you for, for looking at the space. We're using Idolize a lot. So any spruce up that you do, it's gonna be great. Um, and number two, uh, because of the St. Mary's way, thank you for asking us what our opinion is. I think those those are two big things that we heard and, and it continues to resonate with, with the way we're doing uh, engagement. I, I, I certainly recognize there's a few little things here where we could have done a little differently, which um, could have communicated those a little differently so that that I think wouldn't have caused um, some of the pieces around the ring road that, that we've seen. Uh, having said that, um, certainly that the, and, and that, and that's the clarification we try to add to people is that there's no decisions made where we're seeking information and, and we still are seeking information so that council has the best information in front of them to, to make the best decision. And as we've seen lots of different people, uh, using the, the, the area in lots of, of, of different ways. Um, so after obviously we closed the survey um, and some commentary was going out, we, we have and we've asked people to send us comments as you got them. So uh, since that date, we received 17, um, I think it was 15 emails and two phone calls that I received personally um, that we've noted here for you. What, what I've done is I've, uh, those, those, a lot of those were around keep the ring road as is. So I've highlighted those in blue just to, to categorize that for you. You can see most of those, uh, that was their main comment, but I included their, their email verbatim in regards to the comments. I didn't list any names, of course, uh, for privacy sake, but there's, those are the comments that you can see there in relation to that. And then there was one more that came in uh, yesterday or last night that I've sent out to council this morning uh, as well in regards to that. Uh, again, a lot of the comments after the fact were, were certainly around uh, the ring road conversation. So, so that's um, at a very high level um, kind of what we received in regards to the, the survey, the survey results and the engagement um, side of things, a lot of information there. Uh, we, we try to summarize as best we can to make it fairly easy to go through, but it is still, you know, 60 some odd pages uh, of information. So uh, certainly happy to try to answer any of those questions. I've got uh, Brett and Kelly on the line as well, that, that certainly have gone through a lot of that data. So can help out if there's any questions from there. Uh, but next steps, so, uh, and, and our CAO explained it a little bit earlier, we see the next step, the best next step, because uh, number one, a lot of interest in this project makes a lot of sense to uh, revamp. We've got some great information in front of us. Next step presumably is um, let's, if there's any general direction around 
the priorities we should concentrate on or decisions around say the ring road if if the reality is we're not going to move forward uh with with that as an option then let's not even put it on the table and let's put together uh concepts for final design that don't include that option if it is still an option we want to at least put on the table then we will kind of go forward with three or four different designs based on what we've seen based on what we've heard uh, and over the next few months put together those new options for council to consider we could then if, if deemed appropriate we can go out for more engagement and basically have uh, comments on those uh, those ones before we come back for basically a rubber stamp final design that then we can take to uh, grants, et cetera, or future capital budgets uh, over the next five or so years uh, to uh, improve, make, make further improvements as we move forward. So that's how we see probably the best next step moving forward because there, uh, there is such a wide gap in, in, in interest um, and also um, based on, on the information we have probably made before our original intent was to come back with one or two now it probably makes sense to probably come back with with three or four different different concepts but i'll, I'll kind of open that floor up now for discussion okay thank you i mean everyone i see hands going up and because me included i have uh, received numerous phone calls and, and emails and so forth i, I do want to um focus council's attention too on on the questions that staff have asked of us on page 33 with regards to where we're going from here. But uh, we'll open up to general comments and questions uh, and then go for there. I mean, the, the survey certainly uh, had a lot of diverse comments. I don't know if anyone read through them all or not, but some of them, you know, uh, everything from moving the library to more places to smoke, some of them are quite interesting, actually. Councillor Craig Mile, had your hand up first. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. I think it was back in April, the design team and the consultant came to council, showed us these options. And I guess one of my first comments was in these options was the ring road. And I explained for all the reasons that if you've read the comments, exactly all of them, I think I quote, I said, I would be very disappointed if something was going on down at the flats that removed the ring road. And then I believe Councillor Pridham jumped right in and was very agreeable. And my position has not changed a day. I do not want to see that ring road taken out. If you ever take it out with Upper Thames, you'll never get anything back and you'll get more flooding every year. Any? Um, and to uh, Councillor Craig Mount's point, um, I, I'm also in, in support of the ring road, which is a little bit different than what I had originally said. And here's why. If we go back to the slide, if we can, um, about what our community thinks about the ring road, I think you got to unpack that a little bit. We don't have to get rid of the ring road, but you'll notice that if this went to a vote, we'd be getting rid of the ring road. So I want everyone to be aware of that because it's nice to sit and stew in your own beliefs, but when you look at the numbers and you can look at the way the numbers are broken down demographically, they're almost identical. So it's not, you can't say it's an age only thing, but, but demographically they sit at about the same thing, but you know, so I'm not saying get rid of the ring road. What I'm saying is we have not opened up the option of exploring the idea that the ring road is only a ring road when we need it to be a ring road. So we don't get rid of it, but we look at things like it is not open to vehicles during specific, I know it seems like a confusing concept. I can see the, the perplex. I don't want to get rid of the ring road. I think it's a unique way to create a park. Most parks you drive into and you have to walk to the far end of this. We have two, if not in the plan, maybe three or four parking lots. Maybe it does become accessible only on foot, certain times of the day, certain events, certain things. Um, but I think that is the third option that no one thought to bring to the table is that we keep it, but we utilize it in the way you would close a street for events, that type of thing. We're not getting rid of it. We're just simply reimagining it. Councillor Albert. I was actually like kind of shocked by the results of the survey, uh, especially with regards to the ring road. I'm not sure if it's like a vocal minority kind of thing or what, but genuinely all of the comments that I got and like anybody who bothered to come and tell me about this at work were like, do not get rid of the ring road. Like whatever you do, don't get rid of the ring road. And I was like, all right, I guess we'll see what happens. So I was very concerned and kind of confused to see that that wasn't 
necessarily the stance of the public on the survey. However, I think that if we didn't, or like, sorry, if we did change the ring road, the amount of people we would have be totally ecstatic about it versus the amount of people that would be furious would, would be far outweighed than if we just did some of our changes and we kept the ring road as it is. To me, that feels safer and would honestly probably please and serve the needs of the community in a way, in a way that is effective. That's just my opinion. Councilor Luna. Thank you, Worship. With all due respect to the committee and staff and everybody that was involved with this, I do think the survey was very biased in favor of eliminating the ring road because both concepts had the, the ring road eliminated. And I think if we had had A being a ring road and B being no ring road, all of these results would have been totally different. I really think we, we I don't think we got a true um, picture in regards to the ring road um, concept. And I am totally in favor of keeping the ring road. Councilor Brennan. Thank you, uh, to your worship. My comments would be similar to Councilor Luna's. Um, that one question where it says uh, the portion of the ring road closed for pedestrians only and that survey result that we've got, I believe that people would like to see in addition to the ring road, a dedicated walking path, but not to remove the ring road. Um, that question, when uh, I ask people if they've done the survey, if they've approached me and they say, you know, you, I didn't realize you were considering closing the ring road, they'd done the survey. Yeah, they'd exactly. seen the plans, but the plans weren't identified that closure to the point where it was noticeable. And when the, that question could be interpreted in a different way. And, I think that it would be lovely to have the ring road and a pedestrian walking path. So yes, creating a path. So that's my interpretation of that answer. Um, I don't believe it's an accurate reflection. I support the ring road. Other comments? So I've received a lot of uh, feedback and, and I would um, agree with a lot of um, Councilor Luna's comments, the reality was is the survey didn't go out and say, what do you want Milton Field to become? The reality went out, the survey went out and said, here's two concepts, what do you think? Um, and the message back to me was, um, we don't like it is what I, what I see. And, and I would also argue, I think when you, if we were to base our decision-making on the people that serve, that completed the survey, while there was a great number that completed the survey, that necessarily doesn't take that as a majority of the population or the, um, the will of the people because uh, from my limited uh, time in um, statistics through um, uh, my, my time in university, it was 1500 that was a significant amount. 1540 was a significant amount if I remember correctly, 1539 I think the prof said to get an accurate feeling of the public. That being said, with a population of near 8,000, that's an incredible amount. So to say that you know the will of the people is get rid of the ring road, I think is a ridiculous statement. That's just, just um, my opinion. I, I think that the, the ring road and Milt Donald Field is iconic to the town. Um, I, while I can see that sometimes, um, you know, perhaps for certain events, one of the things that has become clear to me is that I have heard from service clubs and other people is that the openness of the space creates a lot of flexibility they can't find in other places. Mm -hmm. um, and the recent example being the car show with the lines put on. The reality is, is they don't get that anywhere else, right? They have to dodge different things as well. Uh, you know, the, 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 the remnants of the fair that the Kinsmen put on um, or other events. So we're trying to encourage other events there. I think part of our focus needs to be strengthening our focus on the openness of the space and the flexibility. Because in my understanding and talking to other people, you don't get that in a lot of places. Part of the exercise I think was to, um, was to um, strengthen um, as we had in our strategic plan the use of the waterfront. And I mean, we've got everything and, and I will point out uh, concept C, um, Lorna Parkinson, who actually took the time to show up today, submitted a drawing. <laughs> and I, I think these are the type of things that are important for us to see and, and to chew on. So um, in, in terms of going forward, I think that we need to re-engage the public um, with um, some ideas. I'm, I, to Councillor Craig Miles' point, I, I think um, any, alteration of the ring road, I think that would be very dangerous because we're learning, um, when we started this process, I thought we could do a lot more than 
the reality is what we're going to be able to do down there. It is on a floodplain. There are a lot of restrictions. Um, we went through the process where we prioritized what we saw today. The other reality is, is that as a result of this exercise, anything we do will be long-term vision. We have a lot of big projects ahead of us. The town does. You know, we have a building across the street that we've decided to save and repurpose. Uh, we need to spend some money in the library. I can go through the list of our 15-year priorities. So this will be grant-driven in the future. What staff's trying to achieve is to have something that, with no disrespect, that we're, we're trying to do better is have something on the shelf because the town is not been good at that. And, and I think the purpose of this exercise, I think it's been very positive. I think the survey is very positive as well. I don't mean to be negative because we did have some very creative and interesting ideas. The reality is we're trying to drive through something, a long-term vision. And one of our long-term strategic priorities was to get more use of the waterfront and people love it. And I think, you know, things like the Yak Shack have been incredibly uh, successful. Kudos to staff for that initiative. And we want to try and enhance those small initiatives. So I see us going forward. I do not see changing the ring road simply because of a lot of things like the, the winter lights and activities. I, I do think, though, that council really does need to, to, to um, look at some of the ideas and initiatives that, that have come out of and some of the suggestions as well as to what we want to include going forward. And I think we can do that with further engagement of the public. I think it was a very positive idea. I'd love to see the guys down and you know, like the, the staff down at the uh, farmer's market. I think that was a positive, but I think that it's, to me, it's like the green bridge um, was one of the reasons I'm here it is the ring road is iconic and I, I don't think we mess with it. So that, that's just where I'm at. So that, that's where I'm at on that. Number two, um, you know, we had a discussion today, which is quite, quite helpful about the soccer field, for example, you know, the information is changing all the time. So I think that, I think that the big thing is we also need to build in some flexibility and, and um, have some, some low hanging fruit of things we can change. And whether it be widening the ring road, whether we be looking at parking, how we use the park to attract things, but I'm hearing again and again, you know, uh, you know, I like the picnic areas. I like the ring road, you know, and I like the flexibility of the park, which is something I don't think that I understood clearly before we started this exercise. So I think this exercise has been um, very positive, sometimes painful, but positive. Councillor Luna. Thank you, Worship. I 100% agree with your comments. And I, I think we've made some really important decisions today. We've, we've prioritized that grant money that we have that has to be spent by March 31st. I think we're gonna agree that we're including the ring, we're leaving the ring road alone, I think, when that comes forth. And it just seems to me that anything else we do down there, if we do anything more down there, is in the future. We're not gonna do it between now and March 31st. So my suggestion is we wait till this time next year and bring things forward if, if we need. We might be totally satisfied with the way it looks on March 31st. So why are we racking our brains, spending time trying to come up with all these wonderful hypothetical pictures when we don't even know what it's going to look like on March 31st yet? Just my thought. That's pretty A question, are we to give direction for the next um, vision that's going to come forth? Because if that's the case, I would like to see the parking along the river remain so people can pull up and, and enjoy the view in their cars. First direction, that, that, I mean, that's part of it. That's up to this group to decide where, where we want to go with things. I mean, um, we have grant money. There is suggestions about revising some of the, we, we have a lot of comments. I mean, some of them, clearly we're not gonna create more smoking areas in a park, for example, but there, there's, <laughs> there, 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 we have comments and things that, that, that we can act on. And I guess, Andre, do you wanna to speak to that about your work with the, the consultant so far? Do you mind just to, to give sort of, sort of your vision in the staff report where things go? Uh, through the mayor, yeah. And, and again, I, I reiterate a lot of comments. Um, certainly, point of, of any consultation is to, again, get that engagement and people definitely are engaged one way or the other on this project. And, and that's that's the important takeaway here. So as, as we move forward, um, and again, if there's decision points where we don't want to move forward with and don't want to waste energy on, then, then let's definitely make those type of decisions. Everything else, there's a lot of commentary, a lot of information. Um, and as we go through, uh, there's a couple of ways we can move forward, but we do have a consultant that, that can help us kind of put those designs and that their expertise into some, some other designs based now on 
better and, and, and more proper information. So we can kind of try to digest a lot of that information we have and, and give some examples. And, and, and the reason to do concepts um, and instead, and that's why we developed concepts in the first place is to give a blank slate. A lot of times we did see a lot of those comments, but it would be a lot, you know, you'd be getting, you know, comments around, put a casino down there. We wanted to really constrain what we can do. And, and those plans really, with maybe the exception of the ring road, um, but even that, didn't change the look and feel of the park that much. Ring road certainly changing that, which helps or doesn't doesn't uh, does change the, the the feel of the of the park. But uh, but there's not a lot of drastic changes because we're limited in what we can do. Um, but those little things, as we know, can can go a long way depending on the group or the person using the park. So moving forward, there's a couple of ways we we can do this forward. Uh, obviously, uh, based on the conversation, we do want a decision on on the ring road side so that we can kind of put that. Uh, that to rest and, and we can concentrate on the other ideas. Um, what we've asked for in the recommendation is for you to give us some priorities as we revise the concepts. Alternatively, what we could do is, um, is work with our internal committee. I've also got a question here, council, if you wanna add a member to that committee as well, because it is a very political um, process that we've heard. And you, and you as councilors have heard a lot of comments that I necessarily haven't heard, right? So bringing that, that information forward um, and, and to the internal committee is, is helpful as well. Prior to deciding on putting forward concepts for you to look at, we can put up, draft of what those concept ideas are, right? So give you a verbatim of concept A will be status quo and, and, and just include basically the priority items that you've included and this is the amenities that would include. Concept B, we will include these type of amenities. Um, concept three maybe is, is a different type of amenities and different uh, look and feel. And then council can, can review those from a, from a verbal standpoint before we actually put pen to paper and make drawings that, that that's where the cost is. Um, and we do have uh, our consultants hired to basically do one or two more drawings up for us. If we go to three or four, there might be an extra little bit of cost that we need to do in regards to those drawings. But, um, but again, uh, it's better to get it right than it is to, um, to save a few dollars on, on that side. So a couple of ways we can go um, and happy to bring back a further report if, if you need some time to digest some of this information. Like I said, there's a lot there. Councilor Luna. Thank you, Worship. I really don't think I'm in favor of spending any more money on this project at this point. I, I don't think we need to be engaging the consultant any further, spending more money on it, spending more staff time on it, when again, we have other projects, 14 Church Street for one, that could um, use those resources much more profitably um, at this point, again, I, I think if, if once we see March 31st next year, what it looks like, then we can revitalize the committee and, and the consultant if we need to. But at this point, I just don't see spending any more money on this, this whole concept right now, other than what we've talked about today. Okay, other thoughts from council? Council Craigmont? <clears throat> Thank you, Worship. I'm kind of though with council. Luna on her discussions because one of my big concerns is to understand the mayor called it iconic park. But how are we going to keep the park for future generations? I honestly believe if staff is doing any work, really investing. Is there anything we can do along the shoreline there to prevent the erosion from years and years of just keep taking when we have taking? Because there possibility might be something we could do, which might change everything down for a few generations. So I think that's really important. How do we save the park from erosion over the next 20 years? Okay, thank you. Further comments? Councilor, yeah. Just have a question about the consultant that's been engaged. Is there already a, a, a money that's been paid to him for a final? submission uh so through the mayor so when we brought the rfp forward last february march uh we approved it was about a thirty thousand dollar touch basically two-thirds to three-quarters of that has been spent in the work that's been done um uh we'd have to go back and, and develop what we can do he's been really good really flexible with us in regards to uh the project and the timing and and, and the scope of work uh so if if the decision today is to pause 
um, for for the you know until till till strategic planning and until next year, um, then we'll have that discussion and uh, certainly um, I'm sure there's a way we can kind of mitigate that contract. Sounds good. Um, to Councillor Craig Miles' point, I I agree that the shoreline is really important and that should be something that we look at um, maintaining or preserving. So I don't know if that could be part of if there's more money that I mean, if we can't mitigate and get the money back from the consultant, is there some way to refocus? Mr. Kimmer, you want to make a comment? Um, fundamentally, I, I generally don't like projects that is we spend money on and we hang out there, right? So if we stop all work today, we're going to have spent thirty or forty thousand dollars on this consultant, and we're not going to have completed it. I think if we back ourselves up. This project always had one of two paths to take. Um, we have the strategic purpose on it, and we could have accomplished that strategic purpose in two ways. Like new big splashy amenities, which I think you saw more in the concepts, or the park's pretty good as it is, let's mop and glow and make it a little bit better based on what the public wants. And I'm already hearing conversation here from council saying, let's leave it, but this would make it a little bit better. Let's leave it, and let's, this would make it a little bit better. Those are the types of things that I think I think you're already settled on that. I think you're settled on option two now. It's a pretty good park already. And these small little changes will make it just a little bit better. We still want to have that in a final plan to show people because we still want to have that final plan that shoreline erosion is doable, but is extremely expensive. But if we have a concept saying that council has blessed this, this is council's future vision on it, and it will help us leverage uh, grants in the future. So I, I still think it's very important to come up with a final concept and a final master plan you're just now talking about a different, a different, a different type of project. You're not talking about adding van shells. You're not talking about adding these big things anymore. You're saying this park is great. We want it to be open space. We want it to be more spontaneous use. And we don't need these big things. But look at parking along the ring road. Look at um, it, you know, always connecting the walking trails, a pedestrian only portion of that ring road. I've heard that today and, and that's set up. Talk to us about what shoreline erosion could look like. If you look back at page 27. You know, some very easy direction for us as staff, then look at all the passive other uses that have been recommended here and try to integrate those. And, and you don't have to be as specific. So the public has clearly told us that they'd love to see some more picnic areas, um, you know, uh, incre increased tree canopy, like enhanced lighting. I like try and find a way to integrate all those more passive things that don't fundamentally change the park, right? Like that's really easy direction to give us and to give to your committee that now goes and sits. It's to, I think Councillor Albert said it almost perfectly. It's it probably serves the community. It's probably what the public really wants now that we understand this, and it keeps most of it in place. Um, I think probably if you make all those changes as of March thirty first, the public will think this project's over and they'll say, "Holy crap, you did a really good job," right? But if you make some of these other enhancements over time, the park becomes even better and better and better, and it fits with what we heard to this public consult of basically, "Don't touch it. It's an icon." Yeah, and I think. Not to put any words in his mouth, but what Mr. Moran said as well is he's looking for that feedback about the erosion and these, these type of things. That was the purpose of the exercise yeah. because these are all items that staff can then approach Upper Thames and the agencies and say, okay, here's what we heard from council, where this part goes in the future. Because the reality is, is that, you know, I would tend to agree with Mr. Kittmer, we do need to have some sort of plan on the shelf because in the in down the road, if something comes along and say, look, this was our vision, you know, because erosion, for example, the first in grants, in my experience, the first thing you say, well, have you looked into it or done anything? We say, yeah, we did this study and concept. We, and one of our counselors identified that as sort of the number one priority, that erosion. So we have this plan and, and our consultant looked at it and said, you know, we, we can temp, you know, tentatively, if we put stones here, whatever, boom, you can go ahead with the grant. If you don't have that on the shelf, is my, my thought experience, then you have to start spending it over anything you want. So that, I, I would agree that the process, it's worthwhile going forward. But the, the reality is, is that we we need to dis discuss with our staff what are the priorities. And one of them I'm hearing is erosion. And I saw everyone said, and then we talked about trees. And everyone said, yeah, trees are important. We talked about parking. They're all simple lists of things. Can I be really bold? Yeah. I just, sure. Can I just start creating your list for you? Absolutely. Thank you want to get through this? You must be hungry, are you? No, I just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it's it's. It's staff's job sometimes to be bold and you know staff were bold in presenting the first concepts and now we've heard very clearly and i think just to help guide you along uh, i can look at this 
sometimes people function better um, seeing something and working from that rather than starting from ground zero. So how about I give you something to look at and you can just start striking things off the list. Can we, can we not share so people don't make fun of my typing skills? <laughs> We should have a brief discussion. Is everyone comfortable with that going forward with the concepts? There's still a feeling we, would, we just want to stop the project. Councilor Lynn. Yeah, when I, when I said um, yeah, to put things on hold, it was because I had this vision of with a consultant and, and we would come back with a Disneyland type plan, like, which to me, it would be a total waste of time. I think we can all agree to that. So I, I'm okay with, with completing the, the agreement with the the consultant and um, having something on the shelf for the future. But along the erosion question, is that not upper Thames to come up with a plan for that? Why, why do we have to come up with a plan? It's our problem. It's our it's park. Our it's our park. Yeah. But we have to build to their standards. Sorry, Brent or Grant, you have experience upper Thames. You mind speaking to that? I, I would agree with that, Your Worship. It is our land, it is our asset. Um, what we do in conjunction with them, they just have a regulatory authority over that parcel, but we, we are the owner of that land. It would be us to develop the concept for that. No different than um, today when somebody comes in for a building permit, it's for them to develop the concept. We approve it or give them guidance on the concept. The same, the same with that because they, they own the building. As far as the building permit is worth this year, we own the property. I guess I was looking at it. The river is theirs. Oh, sorry. But they control it. Okay. Very much, yeah. And that being said, regarding Upper Thames, if we have a plan in place, Upper Thames does get funding up to 50% of some projects that they think it's important and put it as a high priority on the list. We've taken advantage, to your point, of the wiki funding yeah. uh, that did the work at the uh, no race as well as the work on the weir. The weir. We don't call it the dam, we call it the weir. There's too many regulations around that. That's another story. <laughs> around the weir, when we did the repairs down there, that was a joint funding. And, and to their credit, Upper Thames did secure a lot of funding for us. It, and, but again, it was our problem. How do we solve it with their regulations? And that would be the same thing. And, and I, you know, there is a fair amount of erosion. I think it's a good point. There's a fair amount of erosion that, uh, and with climate change and all these things and water levels, I mean, I think it's something that we've already set out that is a priority. So I, so I think it's worth the, the point. Is I think it's something that should be a priority. If we start getting, if we can do something to mitigate flooding, like if we, let's face it, we can put whatever we want down there. If we start getting more and more flooding as a result of climate change, the park becomes not as useful. So I, I think it's definitely important. Any other comments with regards to priorities while they're working away the list here? I did hear like soft lighting uh, in the park. Um, not bold lighting, but soft lighting for evening use. Can I just get a clarification of parking? Because I have my parking spot down there. It's a little <laughs> dirt cut out under the willow tree. So we're not talking about parking, like paved parking spots, are we? What do you mean by parking? When you can park there for anywhere me, you want. I was... Um, saying I don't want to eliminate the parking because we were talking about the road elimination or keeping the road. Oh, we want we'll to keep the road, but we'll also keep <coughs> the parking. Now, if that changes to be like an angle parking or some other, um, you know, that would be, I think, something we could look at. And also adding a walking trail inside on the riverside or the other side, <coughs> but a dedicated pedestrian space that is that is safe for pedestrians and, and also the road and also the parking. I want it all. I want it all. <laughs> okay, anything else in terms of priorities? Councilor I'm just, again, I've asked this question before. And I never know the, what, what the answer is I get, but with spending all this money on the washrooms and whatnot, what about lighting, cameras, trying to deter vandalism, things like this? That's an ongoing discussion with staff grant. Uh, <laughs> well, just throw it on the list. <laughs> um, so we, we did talk about it. We did talk about, um, so there is some challenges with cameras. Um, 
both both on the back end and the front end as far as what what can they see what can they not see how we store the information there, there's a bunch of complexities with that and typically we use put we can't put cameras in as a last resort we like to try with the locking system the self-locking system and see if that helps with some of the um vandalism that we have within the space and we go from there janet do you have something to put up for us here So these are all things that were mentioned in the survey. Sorry. Yep. Go ahead. You know, there's those uh, door cameras that people use all the time. Their doorbell cameras. Is there something like that that can be incorporated so you can see actually who's in and out of the washrooms on the outside, of course. We have a lot of regulation around privacy. Do you <laughs> no, want to talk about right? that? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that so we, we, we have had, you know, without <laughs> breaching any confidentiality, Jenna, can you talk about that, please? We've got into a real jackpot at the PRC. I think. Of course, thank you. Um, through your worship to Councillor Pridham, anytime you consider surveillance, we have to um, take into consideration the requirements of the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. If we're going to bring in surveillance, we need to have a reason. And so it's not just monitoring, it's because we have statistics that show that there have been concerns. If we do that, we have to go out to public engagement based on our video surveillance policy and ensure that the public has an opportunity to comment on that. If we do receive support and there are no large concerns that come forward, then we bring it forward to council to consider. And we have to ensure that signage is posted anywhere that that surveillance is coming in because we are taking screenshots of individuals face their personal identity and we are to protect that so there is a lengthy um, uh, process to go through before we get that included not that it's not possible but it's not just as easy as saying let's protect them let's just have cameras if you think of um, red light cameras that are in a lot of municipalities that's why they're not there because it's taking a lot of additional information it's costly but also once we get all that data into our system when there is an incident now we have to go back when we give it to law enforcement we have to block out all other individuals that may have popped up on the camera at that time and we have to tell the public that we have taken a screenshot possibly of their faces, turned it over during the investigation. Nothing is simple. Um, so anyway, so staff have developed a, a list here. Um, thoughts, these are very general concepts. Jenna, I'm sorry, we're missing something there on that on the screen just so we can see. Yeah, I know it's okay. There we go. Thoughts? So you're going to get inside my brain. I just went to page 27, looked at everything that I felt probably um, are very important and important right high and qualified as a passive use. Yep. No set priority order to any of these at this yep. point in time. For sure. Councilor Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, again, going back to our April, um, our first presentation, uh, I didn't have... I guess I had an opinion based on my usage of the flats that I'm pedestrian only. I'm probably three times a week and I'm pedestrian only through the flats. Again, looking at comment survey results, very confusing because it's telling me two different stories. I, I'm in support of, you know, if the ring road needs to stay, that's fine. One thing I want us to be careful of is, well, that's the way we've always done it. So that's how we're going to do it. I think we need to be very mindful of that as a council because that can take you down a really bad road. With saying that, I love the Christmas lights. Again, I generally walk around them. I don't drive around them, but I can appreciate people wanting to drive around them. Um, I'm just looking at this list here, and I'm seeing enhanced parking along the ring road. I, I don't want to see any more parking along the ring road. I think there's enough parking there. There's benches. So if we're going to keep status quo and keeping the ring road, let's not turn the ring road into a parking lot. So I. I that one I'm struggling with. Councillor Elwood? Uh, I'd say I generally agree with Councillor Lucas on that one, as well as the fact that I'm not sure that would even be like achievable because we'd have to pave to enhance, I guess. 
I don't know. It's the only thing I could think of. So I don't think that's even really going to be a thing we can do. And I guess when I see it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. I guess we're, 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 we're asking someone who we've hired to look at it and see if it is possible. So um, anyway, that, that's the way I interpret it is, it, is that if there was a, a way to have more parking without affecting the park, that, that's what that says to me. But again, if, there, if there's the feeling is there's adequate parking, that's fine too. Other thoughts where we go from here? Councilor Brim? I don't see on the list like naturalization or that um, tree. Oh, again, well, there it is. Grease. Oh, there it is. The trees, the increased tree canopy. Okay, but does that mean like a naturalization area? I don't know. I think that's a catch all. That's, okay. It's a it's a catch all, and you, our recreation master plan does have a a, um, a recommendation that, that, says, that says we start looking at strategic naturalization of parks. This was never a park where we flagged to naturalize. If you think of Meadow Ridge Park and see what we've done there with the plantings and you let the grass go along, I'm not sure that type of naturalization would fit in with the use of Mill Fennel Field. You you would start sacrificing some space um, that it, you can already see quite consumed during events, and it promotes more bugs, more mosquitoes. It's just there might be a conflict between the naturalization and, and nature and, and people's use of the park. But trees, yeah, we, again, we heard very clearly through the farmer's market and all the other engagement that more shade in the park is something that people would like to see. But I think the nice thing about a landscape architect is they can, get, they can recommend where strategic shade should be without compromising your use of green space for events. Yeah, again, this, this will come back in a report and um, we will have the chance for further engagement with the public and further tweaking of, it, of anything down the road. So that the intention is a starting point. Event space, that's, I think that's a good point. That's a fair point that, that, that has been raised about allowing for event space. We don't wanna do anything to take away space from the farmer's market or necessarily something that may happen there. Anything further with regards to this? Are we comfortable with the path forward like this? I'm not hearing anything, so then I'll put the, oh, the only other thing on the list was whether um, anyone wanted to be on the committee or want to work through the council process. I've had a number of phone calls. I'm quite willing to sit on the committee if, if, if council's okay with that or if anyone else wants to I'll leave that up to that was one of the questions we had. Uh, Andre is Councillor Pridham and myself, or is that yeah? Um, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. And again, the reason we pose that is, is like I said, um, we've heard some pieces on the staff side, but certainly you as, as the councillors have heard a lot of comments from the public uh, just in your outing. So adding more people to, to that list um, helps us kind of get, get the results in front of council that, that you expect to see. So, so that, that works great for us as far as we're as concerned. Okay. All right, anything further with what we have on the screen? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll read it. I'll put the motion on the floor, read it out. Jenna, are we missing anything then? That, okay, so then, that, so then the motion I'm gonna put on the floor, then we'll go from there, that COR 41-2023 Mill Funnel Revitalization Project Engagement Results be received, and that the Strategic Priority Priorities Committee recommends to Council, the Council shortlist the following amenities upgrades to be included in the revised concepts for the long-term master plan for Mill Funnel Field. Protection from shoreline erosion, pedestrian walkway trails, including along the ring road in connection to the Grand Trunk Trail and downtown sidewalk network, increased tree canopy, enhanced lighting, additional seating areas and rear view viewing areas, additional picnic areas, 
upgraded pavilion event space. That the revised, further the revised concept retained the ring road at Milt Donald Field and the staff be directed to develop three final draft master plans for Milt Donald Field for future public consultation as recommended in COR 41-2023 and that Mayor Strathy, Councillor Pridham and Councillor Edney sit on the Milt Donald Field Internal Project Committee. Someone willing to move that motion? Moved by Councillor Luna as our seconder. Councillor Allwood, any further discussion? Councillor Pridham? Sorry, I have just one more question. Um, the three, is that within the council, uh, I mean, the, the consultant's budget or is that increasing the budget to get three concepts? Uh, through the mayor, we'll have that conversation. I don't expect it to be, uh, it might slightly increase, but it won't be a, a very large increase. I, I think we can do it within the scope of where we were at relatively fine, like it's plus or minus a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, because if it's going to be, Oh, business one. If it's going to be more, then maybe we should draw it back to two, which is what we received the first time. Uh, through the mayor, just leave that with us. If some years it's going to be highly more expensive, so we'll bring that back in a further okay. report. Thank you. Any further? And I'll call the question. All those in favor? Motion is carried. All right, so our next meeting of strategic priorities will be. Um, August 15th, 9 a.m. here as well. Um, I will be absent for the next council meeting. Uh, Deputy Mayor Pridham will be in the chair. Anything further with regards to meetings? Seeing nothing then, I'll, I'll entertain a motion this meeting of the Strategic Priorities Committee be adjourned at 12, 11 p.m. Someone want to move that motion? Councilor Alward, second by Councilor Lucas. All in favor?